Hey man, what's going on? It's Ace on the track, and you're listening to The Bass, where we talk about life, music, business, and everything in between. Today, I got JT on the beat with me. What's up, JT? Yes, sir. What goes in? JT on the beat, a.k.a. JT. Who is that JT on IG? Three O's, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Nice. What's, what's good, people? What's good? It's you good to be good here. today? Yeah, man. I feel good, bro. I'm glad you hit me up to come to this, bro. It's my first podcast, you know what I'm saying? Oh, really? Yeah, it's my first podcast okay. ever. I remember some people hit me up to want to come to one, but I'm like, they never hit me back to like ready to like pull up for it, you know? So like, this is actually my first, first one, for real, for real. I didn't so, know that. Yeah, so like, honestly, this is a good experience bro i'm glad you chose me to be the f- for the first yeah, episode yeah actually i chose you because i figured like there was a bunch of people on my list you know like okay who am i gonna have as a guest you know just in general yeah, yeah. and then i said you for the first episode because you're an artist yeah engineer yeah. producer and yeah. i don't even know what else you do but like just that like that's you know, I, yo if it's interesting strictly music no cap strictly I, music strictly music because like i don't do i work you know we you know at Baha'i, we do everything but you know well I, I but I mainly mainly focus on the music side of uh, our our company for the most part. I do the recording, mixing, the mastering. Okay. But everybody, but you got guys like Waterboy, which is the C- CEO of our company. He does basically everything. Honestly, when it comes down to the marketing, when it comes down to doing graphics, he can also do recording, mixing, mastering as well. Damn, that's crazy. You yeah, guys that, are like talented as hell. Eh? Yeah, bro. That's what I'm saying. You get a team behind you to get everything done, bro. Like every, you just feel like you can like step up to like a higher playing field in the fucking yeah, industry. Yeah, for I think everything you do, um. If if you do it with a team behind you mm. or a team next to you, mm. uh, it comes out a lot better. You know what I mean? Mm. You can go a lot further than if you're doing it by yourself. Exactly. You know, you got a lot of different opinions around you. You guys kind of all think alike in a way. In a way. Exactly. And, you know, when you kind of apply it for, like, different people you work with, you know, it's just, it'll take you to another level you won't even realize. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah. So, what's up? What's uh, what's the topic at hand today? What's up? Um, shit. Well, honestly, we can talk about whatever you want, but um, what I wanted to ask is... How did you get even, like, started in all this shit? Because me, I didn't hear your name. I never heard about you mm. until I went to the listening party for Shrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. At Baha'i, and, like, two months ago. Yeah, yeah, true. And then I never heard your name, and I seen you recording there, like, at the party. You were, like, you were just locked in. Yeah. It was a whole party going on. You were just true. in the studio doing your own thing. Oh, man. And, uh, and then I, I've been seeing your name everywhere ever since, but I never saw your name before. Mm. So I was just wondering, like, yo, who who's JT? You know what I mean? How did you get started in this shit? How did you link up with Baha'i? How did you do all this? It's so crazy, bro. It's a long, long story, but I'll try to condense it to like a good, a good one. Okay, realistically, uh, uh, JT on the beat, you know, also known as uh, actually, I don't need to say the Govy. There's no point for that. But <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, nigga originally from Florida. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Florida. No, I'm not from Montreal. I bet. I oh shit! I don't even have the Montreal accent, so you can tell that I'm not even from here. Uh, I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I moved here in 2017. Okay, um, why'd you move to Montreal? got complicated uh won't say that on the on, okay. the on the on the cast but it, you know, if you know you know if uh, for all the trappers out there if you know you know um yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know it's a sticky situation how to bounce i went to go see my dad um i went to go live with my dad for the first two years when i moved here in 2017 fucking toxic ass man had to leave that spot asap bro Damn. fuck bro it was so bad so bad but before i moved i moved here i was uh i was making beats in 2016 and like it's so funny story about fucking how i started with fl is just um my friend had, like i remember i was listening to a kendrick album i'm pretty sure it was the good kid mad city album yeah and i was telling him yo the fucking instrumentals on this are sick bro it's like yo bro you want to try to make shit like that it's like yeah yo download fl studio i'm like all right I downloaded that shit because I also had a laptop at the time. So I downloaded it. I opened it. I'm like, okay, where's the beat? <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's how I felt too. Yo, yeah? Because like, I opened it. I was like, yo, where's the beat? How do I get it to come here? I'm yeah. like, da, 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 da. So yeah. then I realized I had to watch videos. I had to learn that shit. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is this? You got to watch like 20, 30 minute videos just to like yeah. get started, you know? You know, you want to know who the first person I started watching? Who? Busy Work Speeds. Oh yeah, I think everybody. If you're a producer, you know exactly. Yeah, who that is. of course. A shout out to Busy Works Beats because that 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 nigga really put me on game on how to start with this music shit. No cap. I was literally every time after school, I would just go home, lay in bed, whip out my phone, and just start watching videos. That's fire. That's how that's how you have to do it. Just yeah. constant knowledge. Constant, constant. I didn't even realize, but yeah, I was just basically teaching myself for years, bro. And then yeah. it's just like at that point, I just started picking it up. I picked up an ear and just like how to do shit on my own. And then you know, 2016, I started making a few beats. And then I realized, like, I know artists at my school that also wanted beats at the same time. But, you know, I didn't think I was good enough to start selling yet. Okay. So I waited till I feel like I could just... Actually, no, I'm going to... 
I'm just gonna say this. I was actually finessing my the, my first beat I sold. I went to YouTube. <laughs> you downloaded a beat and sold that shit? Yo, you heard it here <laughs> first. What the fuck? The finesse, yo. The finesse. Yo, you got to do what you got to do to get that shit done. That's right? crazy. Yo, trust me. Trust me. That shit. I, it, That's I, crazy. I feel bad, but yo, a quick 50 for like a beat that doesn't... That, yo, but <laughs> the beats I picked up were like... Yeah. I made sure there were ones that like weren't really known. Yeah. Like under like maybe like... 5,000 views yeah. type shit, you know, that probably yeah. people were never going to see it. So those are the beats Damn, I picked out. It, was there a tag on the beat or no, no tag? No, okay. I made sure there was no tag. I made That's sure there was crazy, no tag. Bro. So there was no tag. Yeah. I had to start. So then I started like that, but then it got to a point, okay, I'm kind of tired of doing it like this. I kind of want to try to actually try to make it. Oh, wait, how many times did you sell a beat? Uh, that wasn't yours. In, in that style, maybe like two, three times. Not too, not too crazy. Damn. But like two bills off of nessing, like something Yo, that's not that's even my... easy, like... It's, it's finesse money. That's yeah, just, it's it was money easy. for me, but for whoever made the beat when they find it wherever out there in the world, they'll be I like, didn't sell that. Like, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> you know, like it, they'll be able to be like, "Yo, I need to hit you up for this beat, man. That's my beat." It's like, no, I bought it from a different producer. <sighs> yeah, Awkward. who's lying? You know, yeah, like, they'll who's... never know. So that's a that's compli- crazy. That's, that was a risk I was willing to take for the future. So I said, "Fuck that," and then yeah, at that point, I just started really, really started working and like. You know, teaching myself how to cook beats, and then at that point, like my mom was getting tired of just me, like if like hearing like the loud noise at the crib, yeah. and then I had to fucking go to college, and then I don't know, man. The whole school shit wasn't for me. I already knew it, to be honest. You kind of know when the school stuff is not for you when you barely even give a fuck about it. Really, you can not give yeah. a fuck, but the only reason why you give a fuck is because your parents make you give a fuck. You know, what school were you going to? It was like unrelated, like not that popular or anything it was called piper high school i was going there for two years i i, I moved a lot when it came to schools okay. to be honest i was in gateway in fort myers for like until my freshman year moved to fort lauderdale where a lot of my family was uh for my sophomore year went to plantation stayed there for a year then i got transferred to piper and it was so stupid how like my mom decided like it was a good idea then because around the time when i when we decided to move to that new school there was a story about um there was a uh, fucking news about uh, a kid dying getting his fucking head cracked open at the fight. school yeah damn yeah. at the school I'm like why do you think it's a good idea for me to go here again like bro like, that's crazy yeah no but at the same time I was appreciative I met a lot of cool people there some of them I still talk to this day but unrelated fuck that let's get back to the music stuff I, yeah i think i feel like i feel like that's more important in this, sure. in this topic but yeah, yeah so i just kept making beats in 2016 uh 2017 my mom was getting tired of me like just not like doing school shit at all and just said fuck it you need to get out of here go live with your dad moved here in montreal in 2017 uh first two years of me living here i was living with him i was cooking up beats basically like every day I was playing Fire. Overwatch and Beats. Overwatch, Beats. If it wasn't Overwatch, I was playing 2K. If it wasn't fucking 2K, I was going to play FIFA. <laughs> Yo, he's nasty at 2K, by the way. This guy, Yo, this guy's crazy. He knows. He knows. This I, guy's crazy. I was probably the nastiest player at the at the 2K tournament. Fun fact. That it was, uh, we had the listening party. I mean, it was a, just a bad day for me, you know? Uh, so that's okay, all it was. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. We all say it's a bad day, dog. <laughs> nah, he's, he's crazy. He's okay, crazy. but yeah. Yeah, so I was just doing whole, playing a whole lot of FIFA, 2K, whatever. I was gaming and making beats like almost every day. That's good. Working for my dad as at the same time on the side doing like a delivery for his restaurant score you know scores huh have you ever yeah heard? yeah I was with doing, the fire the yeah, logo yeah, yeah exactly I was doing delivery for them for like a, okay. at least a year and then uh, the, after the second year of living with this man I had to he was planning to kick me out because I wasn't really doing anything. Uh, yeah, well, he thought you weren't doing nothing. He thought I wasn't doing yeah, nothing. Yeah, but you were making beats. Yeah, I was making beats all the time. Yeah. But I didn't think making those beats would actually take me anywhere though. You know that's yeah, what, and that's where like the difference was with that and. It got to a point, like, this is around the time I was actually going to Music Technique. It was the second year I was living with him. I was going to Music Technique. Uh, I started there. When you were at Music Technique, was it the one on Barry? Yes, the original on Barry first. Oh, so this was a a while ago. Yeah, it was a while, bro. This was 27. Oh, oh, actually, it might have been, like, literally the first year I got here. Yeah, first year, it was 2017, 2018 class. I was part part of that class. If you go to Music Technique now, if you're going to Music Technique, you're watching this, like, 
you are in Chinatown now, but originally yeah. it used to be in <laughs> Barry. Barry yeah. used to be in Barry. Used to be in Barry. I was going there where we were still in Barry. You know, I honestly missed that location because I honestly that location was so fire. It was basically like in the, in the heart of like the city type shit. And honestly, like, I find Chinatown like pretty fire location. Yeah, too. that's a good location. Because it's like a ten minute like once my girl met me there, mm. and then it's a ten minute walk to like St. Catherine downtown, the malls and shit. So yeah, it, it is a pretty kinda, convenient yeah. spot though. Both uh, of them though, like yeah, they're both pretty good. Yeah. I think it's just the reason why I say I like the Barry location the you uh, lo, uh location more is just because um the studios the studios how much they, they were changed? nicer yeah bro to be honest i honestly that's the one thing all the students talk to me about um they're like like let's say we see kids from like older sessions yeah, i yeah. mean uh you know like Past later years. sessions yeah, yeah, yeah like session four and they're telling me like oh take advantage of the studios but like me I, i've been to the studio once because i have my studio you know Ooh. and it's like all the other kids are renting like the other students they're <laughs> renting the studios every week like Two times a week. Yeah, me. I, I don't the like shit. them, bro. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't like the studios. Like, yeah, the one in China because you're going to the one in China. Yeah, right now, maybe right? that's why. But yeah. it's just like compared to my studio, I'm so comfortable in my studio, and I I, I think it's really good. Mm. So that when I go there, it's like I'm just I'm not comfortable, and the plugins are trash. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it depends. It depends which studio you're like booking and stuff. Yeah. Like, do you remember what studio yeah. you booked that first time? It was one with UAD plugins. It was a uh, studio. Orange, maybe? Oh, I think. Orange was okay. I didn't really like that fucking yeah. studio. But we use Studio Red a lot, though. Mm, with, the with Red the Studio class. is definitely yeah. hard. I love that yeah. studio. But, yeah. but if you went to Barry, that, the time we were in Barry, I was let, if you know, if you're watching this, you're from Music Technique. I was rent. Uh, I was booking the Regi, Reggie Studio. Reggie, yeah. Yeah, the Reggie Studio. It's the biggest like, one. Con- yeah, the biggest one. Yeah, still. Yeah. And like, fuck, man. I, honestly, if I still had the skill set I had, I have now from back when I was in school, bro, I would be making dummy bread right now, bro. I'll be saying, "Yo, got a studio book right now. Who's trying to work?" Yeah, bro. I'll call up everybody I know right now and tell yeah. them, "Yo, studio right now. Who's trying to come work?" Every fucking time because like, yo, I already have the skills to start getting to work, bro. So it's like it wouldn't be nothing to me, bro. It's just not now. I'm getting paid yeah. for it, you know. But I'm that's just a little thing for engineers. I probably haven't really started yet, or that I have already started, or people that are going to school there right yeah. now. So yeah, so I went to music technique for a year. I met water boy there like, oh he went yeah. to school there too no he didn't go to school there actually it was uh there was a session the the guy who booked the studio the reggie studio his name was uh hypno hypnotic beats i don't know if you ever heard of him uh, with a k yeah i feel like i've heard that name you might, yeah. i'm pretty sure you probably yeah. heard, you ever heard of blockchains like like uh resolvo and uh, k bands and yeah that? yeah they're yeah. all like together in a group and it's okay. like uh but this was like I don't know how long how close he was at the, with them before around that time. But like um, I remember Hypno was there, Po was there, some artists were in there, and then I saw Waterboy was also in there. He was there as a photographer. That's what I'm oh, saying. Oh wow! Was, that's what I'm saying. He also does. When I say he does graphics, is because he was also a photographer as well. Okay. He was a photographer. He was shooting for uh, everybody in the room, and I pulled out and I popped out. And uh, I was just watching them do their shit. And then he pulled up to me. I was like, yo, you uh, you go to school here? I was like, yeah. He was like, yo, does that mean you can book studios here too? I was like, yeah, yeah. What, are you an artist? And he's like, yeah, man, I make music too. They showed me his music. I was like, at the time, I was like, it's okay, but you could definitely get better. Yeah. And at that time, I let him, I constantly kept booking studios so for him, so he can come in and work with me. And that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like how Just we helping start. each other out, basically. Yeah, exactly. At the time, I didn't know how established he was in terms of like, um, in terms of how much like how much he knew people in the city, so I yeah. just kind of like it was just one of those things. Where it was like I wanted to work to teach myself. Type yeah, of shit. that's kind of where and I, it ended up being really good. And it ended up taking me into a different place at this point. You that's know, that's really crazy. So yeah, I met him at school. We just started working together, and it got to a point where it's like he wanted me to get hop on tracks with him. Yeah, and I don't know. At this point, you never rapped, or you rapped too. No, I wasn't doing any of that actually. Okay. I wasn't doing any of that before uh, before school. So after school, it's just like you know, I recorded him a lot. I recorded a lot of different people at the same time while I was in school. Uh, I met a lot of cool people. Some of those people that we used to work like come to the studio when I was going there. I still like either still kind of work with them now. My go to guy that still I still work with to this day. It's because uh, uh, Jay Schreier. I don't. You definitely know Schreier, right? Of Obviously. course, yeah. You, yeah. Came to the, you came to the listening party. Yeah, he, he's a cool guy. I knew. I met him first at the studio when I was in school uh, because uh, Waterboy referred him to come to record, and okay. I was like, "Okay, who's this kid?" It's like, I don't know, man. He's pretty good. I saw like, so him popped <laughs> out. He came through. He's like, "Yo, JT, you got beats?" I'm like, "Yeah, I got beats." I played him one of my beats. This kid freestyled the whole way, man. One take legend. He, I told him that, like, yo, bro, do you understand? Like, you're a one take legend, bro. He's like, <laughs> he does his little whatever. He does his stupid laugh or whatever. 
<laughs> you know, he does a stupid laugh or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, from that, it's been a while since that day. And it was only like, what, another, a year after that, because I haven't worked with him since. I, I see him again at Dev Studio. I was like, I Misfits? Yeah, yeah, okay. Misfits, at Misfits Paradise. I saw him recording with Dev. It's like, yo, Shrier, what's good, dog? And then da 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 da. We talked, chopped it up a bit. And then, and then realizing, like, we were just talking, realizing that, like, yo, we can get a lot of shit done. Because I told him at the beginning he has a lot of potential. Yeah. He, and he was also pretty connected with the city as well. Because he knew a lot of people that that that, uh, that he worked with in the city already as well. I don't know. It's kind of hard to figure out how to, like, place the story. Because, like, kind of everything's all over the place. But it's, like, because I'm trying to chronologically order this. Yeah. But I don't think it'll make any sense the way I'm talking about I'm, it. I'm, it's making sense to me right now. Yeah. It's okay. interesting. Honestly. Yeah. I didn't know all this shit, you know? Yeah, so. okay, okay, true. Because, like, this is, like, your first time actually trying to, like, getting to know me type shit. So. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I'm saying I, I met you once, like yeah, true, you know, true, eh? At the listening party. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I met Schreier. Uh, honestly, I, I remember uh, I was living in a trap house. Yeah, I would call it a trap house just because, like, it was in DG, and it's like it was super ghetto. It was super ghetto. Like where, bro, where? Uh, um, literally, like the crib was like 15 minutes away from like Snowden. So actually. close to here. Yeah, I would say so. Because this is a 15-minute walk from Snowden. Is it actually? Yeah. It's like yeah. right, like... How close is Snowden actually from here? Is it actually 15 minutes walking or driving? Walking. Walking? It's like 14 minutes, 15 minutes, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I was probably... Yeah, because I was living around there. I always had to take a bus to get to the metro. Okay. But like the crib I was living, I was living on Walkley for a bit. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah. it was more like down there. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, you. yeah. I was living on Walkley. Okay. And like, you know, I was fucking sleeping on a fucking mattress on the floor and shit. And I was just yeah. like... This was like during COVID time. And I was just like, this is uh, this is post music technique. Just like, funny, uh, not a funny story, but a quick story. Um, after I finished music technique, I didn't get my certificate of completion. Uh, after I finished, why? Um, I'm not exactly sure why. I'm pretty sure something had to do with my grades. I'm like, bro, what is so it? So you finished it. You paid for it. You finished it, but I didn't get the paper. Wow, bro. I mean, it was pretty disheartening, honestly. And I had to think, I had to really think about how my life was going to go after that. That's and crazy, It was bro. hard, bro. It was hard because after school, I didn't know what to do anymore. I just stayed living with my dad, doing deliveries a little bit more. And then he was getting tired of me, not looking, for, not getting a job. I was fucking jumping around, getting jobs from like uh, working in warehouses, doing fucking forklifting shit. Fucking, yeah. ugh, fuck, bro. That's so bad, bro. I fucking hated life at that time. But then This I, is COVID? Like, yeah, no, this is uh, pre-COVID, pre-COVID. Okay. This is pre-COVID. School just finished. Uh, now I'm just fucking working at warehouses, doing delivery. And my dad's getting tired of me. He wants to kick me out. And then I'm I'm talking to Waterboy. Like, yo, me and Waterboy have a history, bro. It's been like fucking two years, three years. Oh, God, I don't even know. It's been so long. Three years. Three years since what? Oh, no. Actually, no. Four years, actually. Since I'm you just, met? Yeah. Yeah, four years. Yeah. Like, from your story. Yeah, four yeah, years. Yeah, four years. Yeah. Damn. Time flies like a bitch. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. I don't even think about it, but like, yeah, I know this dude for four, four years. years, bro. Yeah, and then we, Shire too, like three, four years, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like not talking constantly through within the time, but like, yeah. yeah. Now it's been like it's pretty much been around that time because like with Waterboy, I pretty much like when it comes to music, I've done everything with him, and it's like I done my first performance. Uh, with him I've okay. done I've recorded my first song with him okay. I did my first music video with him like everything we did together bro and it's just like I just feel like me and him are like an unstoppable duo you know what I'm saying that's, that's like, great to like we just we just constantly grow off like we grow off of each other and we just keep like getting better at what the fuck we do you honestly know? you need that you need those people around you that just make you better you know yeah bro you that's can do cool. everything on your own but if you don't have people to like I feel like if you don't have a proper support system at the end of the day to help you get up there like what can you, how far can you actually go at the end of the day yeah. you know but I do like one of the, someone in the city I do respect a lot is um Mackie you know Mackie Lavender I don't oh okay like uh, I don't know where he's from here in uh, in uh, in Quebec but like uh, I think he's from West Island or something I don't know but he like that guy does everything on his own and it's like I have to respect that because like he doesn't he tells me he doesn't have a team or anything helping out with like paperwork stuff marketing stuff when he wants to do his music yeah. things, and I'm like yeah bro that's tough bro I feel like if you had a team like he's good where he is right now like because he's constantly traveling and stuff but it's like at the same time I feel like if he had a team he could already be out of Montreal and probably be like a st like a star out of the city type of shit honestly because his music is honestly really good um but yeah like me and Waterboy like like I said before um we just done a lot of things together. I did my first done uh, my first performance. It was um, MTL Bliss. It was on the rooftop. 
That was uh, I don't know if you ever heard of MTL Bliss, eh? You probably I don't know. Maybe I don't think so, but I, I feel like I've seen this performance somewhere. Maybe like I scrolled down on Bahai or something. Mm. Was it on their page? Yeah, maybe yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, it, 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 I don't think it would have that performance, but um, okay. but that was our first performance. This is before we actually made Bahai. This was actually when he was oh. like just an artist. It was until it was until a year later. Like in twenty, it was like until not until twenty nineteen we started doing the Baha'i thing. We started working. Twenty nineteen, you said? Yeah, twenty nineteen. Okay. This was pre COVID. So oh, wow. Th- so this was like uh, the beginning of the year. We did our first show at Echo Privé. Uh, we were. Oh, you we, did your first show at Echo Privé? It was not no as Baha'i. We did our first show at at, at Echo Privé. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's yeah, a, that's a good. Yeah, you know, we like, had um. Oh God, there was a lot of artists on that lineup. I forgot. I'm starting to forget some names, but we had uh, Bea Da Vinci, we had Dev, we had Gold, we had fucking, okay. we had Lou Phelps, we had um. So just putting people on, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Was it we, a good night? It was a fucking fire night, yo, man. Ah, oh, geez, it was such a good night, bro. This was right before COVID, too. No, no, this is not right before COVID. This is like the start of. Tw- this is the beginning of 2019. Okay, so like a year before COVID. Yeah, legit a year before COVID. Okay, yeah, legit. So like, literally in 2020, I think in January. January, like our last event before COVID was Crazy Rich. Uh, if you were there, you know, you know, we had a crazy time. I think that was probably our best event. We fucking oh. packed out a fucking Airbnb, 300 people. Oh, shit. 300 people in a fucking, in an Airbnb, bro. Yeah. We had performances. Like a had, condo? Yeah. What the fuck? It was, I, can I even say it was a condo? It was huge, bro. There's like three levels. Like a penthouse type shit. Yeah. But it was in a building? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in a building. It was in um, Old Port. It was in Old Port. Damn, yeah, it was bro. in Old Port. It was an old port, and like, yeah, we had, I would say we had we had some pretty cr- crazy performances. We had Desire perform, we had uh, Yeni Yuka perform. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had uh, Ching from Toronto come to come from Toronto to come perform with uh, Water Dude because we had uh, we had, he had a song together with him. It's called uh, Crazy Rich Doom now on Spotify. Um, you say Water Dude? I said Water. Dude. <laughs> I call him Water Dude because okay. of fucking Shire. Shire is like he calls him Water Dude all the time. Okay, I, I was Water. like, who's Water Dude? But uh, yeah, I seen that song actually. Yeah. yeah, they have the music video and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. Cool. Yeah, yeah, the music video. I fucking yeah. uh, uh, I produced the song, so it was like okay. it, was, it was like one. Damn, I should probably put that as a credit. I don't even people that. I should probably put that as a producer credit. Uh, anyways, <laughs> off topic, yeah, off fire. topic. But yeah, I, pr- I produced the song. I mean, we produced the song together, but it's like yeah, I kind of you and Waterboy. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We produced the song together, but yeah, it was mainly like I would say like I started like the whole bass yeah. of it, like getting the whole drums down and everything. Oh God, I wish I had like. My laptop, I laptop, so I could just like show what the fuck. Kind Yo, of on some genius shit, deconstructed. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that'd be yeah. so sick. Maybe that... I should do something like that too. Yeah. You know? When you have producers come here to talk about like a certain song they made that Yo. probably like started blowing up or something. That's not it's a like, bad idea at all. Yeah, yeah, bro. I didn't come. Uh, that song like it ended up producing like what thirty k streams overall. So I was like, it was a good. It came out as a good song, man. Like uh, I would say, like it was a. Uh, it was a really, really good song. The whole process to the end of dropping it was a different story because, like, it was a bitch, bro. I won't talk about to it. To drop let, it? Yeah, just to drop it, bro. Okay. It was a, so it was so annoying because, I, I don't know. I'll let Waterboy talk about that because that's his thing. I'll definitely have him on soon, so. Yeah, for sure. He'll probably yeah. he'll have a lot more to say about that than I will. I was just the guy behind the scenes doing the, yeah. the music stuff, you know? But in, for the most part, yeah, in the beginning when I, when I met him, I did my first performance. I, st- I started recording my first track with him. Um, then I started recording myself low, on the low for, uh, every now and then while I was still at school. Um, yeah, I just did a lot of shit. Wow, I, there's so much shit in my head. I, I don't even know how to Yo, I can it. tell you're going from here to there to, you know, yeah, like, I keep you going, got a lot like, of shit. All the way in the future, all yeah. the way in the past. All the way no, that's shit. cool, though, you know, fucking... Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just going to try to, like, order it in a way it will make sense. But I, uh, in terms of, let, let's say, I'm just talking about producer-wise right now. Yeah. As a producer, I have made basically all of, almost all of his beats to this day. Waterboy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we have, um, even now, we have, we've had this project we've been working on for, like, a year and a half now. And it's just, like... Like an album type shit? An album, bro. What's it called? Um, I don't think he want. I think I'll leave him because it's <laughs> okay. his his project. Okay. He has all the ideas. Okay. I, I I I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about anything outside oh, of it. But like I would say, bro, this is a type of project that like shake shake the world type shit. No cap. Yeah. Like I'm talking about like we're creating a whole new genre, bro. 
a, oh, shit. a whole new genre. That's cool as hell. So it's like, yo, That's really cool. I don't think people are ready for when we actually drop this and get this out there. And I think like this is, I kind of feel like all the work we've done up to this point, all, all his ideas, all of my ideas, all the work we put in, all the work he's put in, all the things we've done together is kind of going to lead to something huge. In yeah. Opinion, you know? So this is, uh, I, I'm, all I'm doing now is just work, work, working at this point now. Good for you, bro. Yeah, bro. So, I've seen you on your Instagram, on other people's Instagram stories. Yeah. Just wag, wag Wizzy. That's all I see. That's you know, all Wizzy. you're going to see. Wag yeah. Wizzy. Yeah. Fun fact about the Wag Wizzy sign for people that actually see my story. Um, Pop Smoke. Everybody knows Pop Smoke. You know Pop Smoke. Pop who? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows Pop Smoke. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Christian Dior, Dior. Yeah, you know. I'm up in all the stores. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... um funny he had an interview um with i don't know who it was but he had an interview. oh the british slang yeah, thing right the yeah british, yeah the british slang one and yeah. one of them was uh wag one that's not really british slang that's just like it's literally patois but like when they told him that he responded saying yeah what means what's good wag wizzy and i'm like whoa, whoa. <laughs> i need that bro yeah i'm like i need something i will stick with people wag wizzy always just, I'll, fuck? oh no don't tell me it's not. oh no no okay <laughs> Yeah, it'll, I think it will lock sometimes. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it happens, yeah. honestly. When it yeah, hold on. Actually, hold on. While we're at it, let me just check something real quick. Yeah, go ahead, man. There's, um, now you're saying Wagwizzy and shit? Yeah, just the Wagwizzy sign. I remember when we had to get, because um, he was talking to me about, yo, we need to get a neon sign for the studio. JT, te- technically, you're going to be the like the go-to engineer. You're going to be the head, Fire. the head guy. So what do you think the sign should be? We had a few options. But then we all decided at the end. Why like, crazy? Why Yo, Wagwizzy. I actually wanted to get a neon sign to put right here for the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them shits are expensive, bro. I was oh, like, bro, yo, like, yeah, <laughs> of course. But it depends where you get it from. Like, where you trying to get it from, though? Uh, it was this guy on Marketplace. Oh. So it was like the cheapest I found because uh-huh. I would go on the internet and it would be like four hundred dollars, whereas the guy on Facebook Marketplace was like one ninety for like the size I wanted. Mm. Okay. And the font. Le- let me put you on game. Okay. AliExpress. AliExpress. I didn't even think about that. Bro, AliExpress. That sign was 40 bucks, by the way. 40 bucks? It was 40 bucks. Yeah. But it probably takes like a month to ship, no? It took like... Yo, it was actually the fastest thing that came that sh- got shipped out to us, actually. It took like a week. Damn. It only took like a week. All right, I'm going to look on AliExpress. Check I mean, Al- I don't know if I can anymore because there's current right here, but yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to try to maybe do a sign somewhere. Yeah, like Cause... you can customize it and everything, bro. So like it would probably be for a good price, too. Like, Thank you. Yeah, trust I'm going to look at that. AliExpress, bro. AliExpress. That's crazy. G- you guys, you guys want something like this? Uh, you know where to go now. All right. So, where the fuck was I at? I don't even know where the fuck I was at. I wanted to ask you, though. What do you like better as, like, music-wise? Producer? Like, being a producer, being an artist, or being an engineer? What, what do you think is more fun to you and, like, more interesting to you? That is a good question to always ask a guy that can do everything. Yes. Yeah. You always have to think about that one. That's what as I'm a saying. man that has gone through that, basically, the trials of all... All three, producing man, producing. Really? Yeah, I li- I remember I was uh I remember when I was recording a song last year, uh, it wasn't last year actually it was a few months ago. The ver uh in the verse I was, I said, uh ah, fuck I remember I forgot kind of what I was said but in a way it kind of went like. Is it released the song? It's not released. It's okay. not released. These are like I have a lot of just unreleased it like. I would say COVID was really like the time I decided to like try to develop myself as an artist and find my sound. It was yeah. the best time, you know, because like For sure. I didn't have to I, I didn't have to think about like you know when I had to drop it or nothing because I wasn't really an artist like that. Let's see, like just like this. Yes, here we go. So let me beat. All right, so it goes like this. Uh, this guy pulled out his whole phone. I had to because I can't really remember all my lyrics. Selling beats up in the hall, yeah, that's when it's my time. Boom. Okay, cut that. Okay, but the shane ain't never easy, so I stop once. Cook me up a beat, feeling like I'm on one, a hundred percent, feeling like Drake because I'm on one. Because every time I cook up a beat, I I do be feeling like I'm on one, bro. You that's, feel like you're in a whole new universe, yeah, right? bro. I so feel, I feel with engineering. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel exactly like that with engineering. It's, it's completely crazy. I hundred percent agree with you on that one because like it's kind of like I kind of treat them the both the same in a way, but it's like instead of working with like just different sounds, I'm working with vocals now. You know, yeah. That's legit the only difference I've seen it. Like I think I, honestly though, producing maybe you need a little bit more of your creativity mm-hmm. to like come out you know yeah, but uh honestly as an engineer you can be really creative too so yeah you can you have to be honestly. yeah you have to be yeah. and, I, and i feel like if you're a producer before you keep i i honestly i was grateful to be a producer before i became a full-time engineer because 
learning what I what I learned from producing, I also yeah. apply it to my engineering. Oh, for sure. What I learned from understanding how to use Pro Tools and stuff, all the automate. Yo, bro, because Pro Tools is a bitch. Let's be honest, bro. I hate Pro Tools. I love Pro Tools. No way. I hate, <laughs> but I love Pro yeah. Tools, you know, because I know so much about it. Like, it, yeah. I'm trying to basically make Pro Tools my bitch, you know? Like, it is my bitch. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, trust. Pro it Tools is my it, bitch, too. Like, yeah, no cap. Shit. Right? Like, <laughs> 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 but yeah, bro. Like yeah. for real, because like um, Pro Tools is a pain in the ass to learn. I'm not gonna lie. Like I would not recommend it to anybody that's just getting into like. No, yeah, for sure. Like yo, um, for me, like I just spent mad time on YouTube learning it. Yeah. But when I go to school, when I went to school, I already knew Pro Tools in and out. Mm. But I see the other students how much they're struggling, and I was like, damn, I was at that point, mm. in my, like I was there mm. at one point in my life, and it sucks, bro. Yeah, like it's, it's so annoying to learn like that shit is crazy complicated mm -hmm. and i'm still learning so much about it you know still, still. there's still so much to learn it's, a, it's a, right. honestly and i think yeah that's what i'm saying i think the learning curve for pro tools is like it's too it's too advanced for someone that's just trying to get into it you know what i mean but like yeah. if you get the basics down like yeah you can get through but i feel like the more techniques you know the more shortcuts you know you end up being yeah like, shortcuts is the only thing that really matters because as an engineer um if you're not fast mm. then that's what separates you from like a professional and there's an amateur exactly. it's just the, the quickness you know exactly. like you have to because you can't fuck with someone's creativity if they're in the booth they're they're singing they're rapping whatever and they have an idea in their head and if you're taking two full minutes to like start the recording mm. they're gonna lose that idea they're exactly. never gonna come back you know exactly. so exactly. as an engineer you gotta be quick with it like you gotta exactly. know pro tools in and out you gotta know your setup in and out mm. and that's why i don't really like going to music technique because i don't like I don't know the studio in and out, right? Exactly. So here, I'm comfortable, bro. Mm. Like, there's a problem. I find it right away. Someone needs to record, boom, right away. Mm. So I bet you feel the same way. Like, you just got to be quick. And I bet you are quick. Yeah, bro. You know? I, I think the number one thing when uh, any t anybody that's new that comes to the studio to record is like, yo, you're just hella fast, bro. I'm watching you like click, 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 yeah. click, click. I'm like, yeah. shit, bro. I mean, I don't know. It's exactly. That's yeah, the response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I thought this is what it's supposed to be. You it's know? supposed like, to be like this, yeah. bro. I, I remember uh, I went to Too Sick uh, for a Waterboy session. He had a session with him. I pulled up and I was just watching Alex do his thing. And I'm like, whoa. He's quick. I'm trying to be that fast, bro. That Yo, this man does everything in like at least 15 seconds, bro. Like, it, it doesn't even make any sense. He, you, you say, yo, you need this effect? Boom, 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 boom. Does it in like for at least 10 seconds, bro. Like, that's all it takes him. But like, I'm trying to be that fast, though. I'm going to put you on something, though. You know how you said you were going to get a, a trackball? Yeah. For me, something that helped me like crazy yeah. and that saves me. It doesn't seem like it saves a lot of time, but in a, like a five-hour session, it will save you time. Or You can map those buttons to like anything, right? So I have yeah. a right-click, a left-click, and then one of my buttons, one of my Top buttons ones, probably, yeah. is to close a plug-in. So I don't have to go to the little red X. Well, actually, maybe Windows, it's a little bit bigger. I'm not sure. It might be. But Mac, it's like a little small X for the plug-in. Uh -huh. And just me, I could my mouse could be anywhere on the screen. And I just press that button on my mouse, and it just closes the plug-in. And oh. that shit saves me, like, I don't know, like two seconds. Yeah. And then add that, add that up every plug-in I'm opening and closing, bro. It, it saves me minutes on minutes on minutes each session. Oh, shit. Are you able to map that out in, like, on the mouse, on the trackpad settings, or you have to do that in Pro Tools. On your on your trackball settings, because oh, yeah. you, there's an app that comes with it. Oh shit! And basically, the the command to close a plugin is Option Shift W or Command Shift W. Yeah. And so you just map that that button to Option Shift W, yeah. and then boom, you're done. And that shit saves oh, you yeah. so much time, bro. So get a get a trackball, and that's the first thing you should do. I mean, oh, man, I've been trying to get a trackball for a minute, but I've been lacking, bro. It's just expensive though. Yeah, like I it's like a hundred bucks for a mouse, yeah, you know. But stills, I love bro. it. I bring it to school. I bring it to make way. I I use it here. I can't use a regular mouse anymore. Basically, if you, you have know, a laptop, like, bro, you gotta bring your fucking trackball high key, bro. Yeah, trackballs like, are worth. I've been using that. a wireless mouse, bro, but it's like I hate fucking constantly have to move my hand all over the place, bro. I just like to keep my hand in place. Boom, exactly. And just do everything, you know. Exactly. Like that's how I'm real. Like. I, this is why I'm saying like I I love producing more because like I realized I've been engineering for such a minute that I, like I forgot what it felt how good it felt when I went to, went to go back to making a beat, you know like when I go back to making. I a mean beat, that's good though because when you went back to it you were like so happy right you're yeah like, yo exactly. this is fun I'm gonna keep doing that yeah you, right. like you forget about the little things that actually brought you joy in yeah. your life you know what I'm that's saying cool. like it's I didn't really completely cut producing out of my life I didn't realize it but I was still like when I was living in the trap in my trap house. It back in uh, on Walkley and shit. Yeah. 
I call, I'm going to call it the trap studio because it really was a trap studio. I had niggas pull up there to record sometimes, you know, it's like bougie, like not bougie, uh, ratchet set up like a fucking TV, two little yeah. speakers, whatever. There was a sub, like my, got my interface, my computer, whatever. Boom, boom, boom. Got that shit in, ready to go. So I, uh, I had Trier was like, he lives super close to me. So he would always, we would always, I would, he would always just come through and I would just like cook up beats for him every time just so we can get, get a track. And he, he didn't even have to use them, but I cooked up a beat regardless because like, I already know how to cook up beats regardless, yeah. you know? So it's like, at least if he doesn't use it, I have it in the vault ready Facts. ready for someone else that can use it. You know what I mean? So, what, you want to say something? Well, I was just going to say, how much were you charging there? Like, for per hour? Well, it, it I don't know. It really varied. Or not charging at all, you know? It, was, it was, went from basically charge, either not charging or maybe deciding to charge someone if I don't fuck with them or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. I didn't fuck with them or something. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. Or it's just like, just because I, I just wanted to make some quick quick bread at the same time, you know? Yeah, Yeah, like, sure. uh, I was charging like, what, 20, 25 an hour? Uh, okay. Like, super, that's not super. bad, though. Like, that's how I started, 20 an hour? Yeah, exactly. Not bad. You know, it was nothing too crazy. But at the same time, I'm, I'm grateful I decided to start recording myself. Uh, this yeah. was before the the trap studio. I was living in Monk. Uh, this is when I still had my laptop and I was cooking beats and shit. I was still learning Pro Tools. This is after school and stuff. I was teaching myself Pro Tools and like just recording myself trying different shit, and then realizing like I was going pretty fucking fast with it. And then Waterboy yeah. came in during one of my sessions. It was um. It was out when I recorded "Mama, I Got You." Stream, stream on Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> "Mama, I Got actually. You." Um, he listened. Uh, he came in to listen to the song. He's like, "Yo, did you make that?" It's like, "Yeah." I mean, obviously, it's my vocals. It's like, "Yo, you gotta drop that." I'm like, "Why? Why? Like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> why?" Because like, bro, come on, it's about your mama, man. Like, well, it's about my mama, but it's like, you know, it's like the the base of the song is just like, you know. I'm doing everything I can to make sure my mama gets in a good position in life. But it's like it's been like what shit four years or something like that and i'm i'm still kind of like grinding and like i don't know how long she has to wait but she's gonna have to wait a little bit more bro honestly it's just everyone has their own pace you know what i mean exactly you'll, you'll get there it was yeah you know? i'll get there it's just a matter of like you know she doesn't live forever so I, it's like it's either like gonna be now or never type shit and that's kind of what the vibe i'm on that's why you gotta go hard as fuck you exactly, know exactly bro that's why and that's why i'm really trying hard to really get my first placement within the next year my yeah, opinion. like trying to like get my get my first placement, go gold. Go, I got all these little goals for myself as a producer and as an artist. Um, I don't know. As an artist, the artist side is a whole lot different, bro. Because like for sure. the artist, being an artist taught me different things for myself. Not in terms in terms of skill and about myself. About the in the same time, I, I don't, could see how that could happen. Yeah, yeah, you know, like being like uh, who. One person I feel like in the city that takes their, their music super, super deep is um, Golden Child. Golden yeah. Child. Yeah. I mean, every time I talk to that man, it's like uh, it's like he learns something different about himself every time he records a new song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, talented, too. He's very good. He's yeah. really good at what he does. Like, you know, I even I, I feel like I've learned a lot from him, not in terms of like just sitting in a room watching him, but just like listening to his music. Because as an engineer, I, I listen to a lot of shit, right? Yeah. Like how he works with multiple voices, how he has like multiple backs over here, how he has his main so clean and crisp and with the clean reverb and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's also got to the point where like not gonna lie i don't want to be that guy but it's like when someone show someone else in the city shows me a song there's like i hear it and i hear how it sounds i'm like by any chance did golden child record you or mix you he's like yeah okay yeah <laughs> you can I know. tell i know he has because he has a certain sound and i feel like he also uses kind of like the same reverb for everybody because like uh i'm not gonna say who the people were but like yeah, like he has a certain sound, but that's good though. That's good. That means he's like established and like like he's established that like yo, this is a sound that like fucking and it's working pretty good for him. Yeah, you know, so. it's it's really good. It's really good, man. I have no no hate to man. Like, like keep doing what you're doing, bro. Obviously, yeah. You know, it's just like you know you know who that is when you hear it. Just like also uh, Carlito as well. You know, Carlito. Doing Carlito, well. yeah. Yeah, Carlito also has a certain uh, sound to his mixes. That's like yeah, I know that was mixed by Carlito for sure. You know, yeah. like I don't know. Maybe I'm just that. Maybe I'm just like a picky guy. No, but, there's a lot of people like that like if you listen to a travis song mm, yeah exactly you know what i mean if you listen to a drake song it's mm. like it's the same engineer every time every and it's time. the same sound but it's working it's like a recipe you know like mm -hmm. it took them a while to find that probably but once they did and it started popping off they're not gonna really change, change that you know exactly. like um exactly. it's kind of like they maybe they should experiment with other shit mm. but at the same time like bro if it's working it's working exactly. if the listeners keep coming back cool 
Keep that's doing it. Exactly, you know? exactly. And that's the way it should be, I feel yeah. like, most of the time, you know? If you feel like you've been using something that's been working for you a minute and it works with other people and they fuck with it heavy, yo, yo. Bro, I have many people tell me when they come to record with me and they fucking just watch me do my shit, like, super fast. It's like, yo, bro, I think you're one of the best engineers in the city. I'm like, bro, there's, like, at least millions of engineers in the city. But... Honestly, I, I, I appreciate the fact that when people give me that cop, kind of confidence because, like, I look at where I am now to where I was before, and it's like, honestly, why can't I be the en- best engineer in the city, though? Boom. You know? Why not? Why not, bro? Because, like, fuck, man. We're low-key at competition. Yeah, we're, yeah everyone's <laughs> at competition with each other yeah. here, but you know what? Fuck it, man. Like, I want I, I want to be at the top of this, man. I know, in my opinion, I think uh, Carlito's probably been, like, the bit, like, been the main, like, go-to trap engineer like for well basically when it comes to trap music you know and it's like but at the same time i want to be i want to feel like you know i want to be the next guy because i feel like he's kind of moving on some different stuff now like he's sure. focusing more on being an artist now instead of like really recording people but i, I just want to be like the engineer that everyone goes to is like yo i want to make the best song but i need a really good engineer to get this shit done all right pull up i got you i'll do it i'll get that shit done for you like quick 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 boom yeah. boom, boom, boom you know but back to the artist thing i think me teaching myself a lot of shit, me do making a whole lot of different songs, kind of like um, changing my perspective on life and like how I am as a person and help my, it kind of helped me understand I, what I am as a person, who I am as a person actually. That's what I'm saying. Like, ugh, bro, that it's weird. That's this is why it was weird because during the time during quarantine, I was really just recording shit like just because sometimes, you know? Yeah. And then I started listening back to all those old songs I, I did during quarantine. It's like, damn, I didn't realize it, but it's like every song I recorded was like a diary to myself. High That's key. a cool way to look at it. Yeah, it's like a, a journal of your thoughts, of yeah. your emotions, you know? Yeah, you know, I uh, I was talking to Trevor, if you know Trevor J. Yeah. Yeah, Trevor J. Like, I was talking to Trevor. I was like, yo, you ever have, you ever have, you ever do something like keep your notes down somewhere? He's like, yeah, I just kind of like whip out my notes and just like writing out my thoughts and my notes and like put a picture that represents how I came up with the idea. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. But I didn't realize it for me, like, what do I do to like really keep my thoughts down somewhere? And I didn't realize, but it's really like when I was recording. It's bro. your music, yeah. yeah. It's my music, bro. It's my music. It's not like it's obviously not for everybody, but in my opinion, like you know, there's songs that will hit, there's songs that won't hit. That's fine. I don't care. Yeah, I make music for me and not for anybody. But like, bro, yeah, being an artist is a whole different lane, fam. It's like you have to be prepared for like sacrifices. You gotta be ready to like really teach yourself shit, and you, for you, sure, and you gotta be willing to really understand yourself at that point, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's like it's a it's a it's a journey, bro. It's a journey. It's a tough one. It's a real tough one, I, but I felt like I went through like probably the first layer, but I'm re- I'm ready to go through the second layer after next year, man. Because right, uh, there was a song I recently finished, I think that really really took a lot out of me to finish. In terms of not to finish recording, but just like mentally, it was hard to finish because it was really me coming for myself type shit. Is it out right now? It, no, it's okay. uh, un- unre- it's a demo and it's uh, unreleased. I probably will have will start planning a, a rollout for this sometime in the future because i think this is a song that not probably maybe everybody can relate to but you'll feel it though you'll feel the you'll feel that i'm hyped to hear that yeah. sounds deep yeah bro i mean i don't know if, I, if you're ever willing to if i'm ever able to just like play shit here on this on this podcast bro i don't know it's for up, sure it's, it's up to you like i, I mean yo either i could like do that in post or if you want to pull out your phone put it to the mic or some shit i don't know if you want to play it play it i mean i, could, I guess it's I, could up just, to you. I guess i could just kind of like play on my phone honestly because it's, it's already here but if they really want to i could play it for you right here and if you i can just send you the song if you want to uh put it in post so yeah you don't have to listen so you don't have to just like listen to like definitely you know. yeah so send that i call the song okay okay and i'm I, put that like at the front by the way when you when you're done talking you know yeah but, I got you. Uh, it's called okay it's called okay all uh, right Let's hear that. Okay, I wish that I could buy like that. Okay, I wish that I was relevant. Okay, but I tell myself that's dangerous. Okay, then I run to where my demons is. Why these niggas always got something to say? I don't really get the message, but I'm here anyway. I may hit after hit. I'm gonna get this shit. Why you be so bad? She wanna lick this tip. Oh, yeah. Smoke two blunts to the face. Uh-huh. Got so high, I'm gone now. Feed my demons a little too much. They tell me what I'm on now. Okay, I get it. I don't wanna admit it. My mind's been fucked up. I don't care that you with it. It's like okay, I wish that I could buy like that. Okay, I wish that I was relevant.
living okay But I tell myself that's dangerous Okay, then I run to where my demons is Okay, I wish that I could fall like them Okay, I wish that I was relevant Okay, but I tell myself that's dangerous Okay, then I run to where my demons is Run to where my demons is and yeah, that's the song fam. Yo, honestly, I see a lot of uh It's a weird mix, but I see some Smiley in there and some Sheck West. Really? Yeah. That, that's actually the first time I've heard that type of comparison, yeah. actually. On that song you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Because um Really? Yeah, because the first comparisons I was getting people were telling me like um that's not um like Kendrick or like fucking. Oh uh, no, nah, I'm not getting that at all. Oh really? Yeah, what the fuck? Because <laughs> how I made that song is because I recently listened to the um his damn album, the Kendrick. Yeah, Kendrick's damn album. I think I I don't know how much credit people actually give that album, but it's like oh bro, it's fire, bro. That that album was a piece of work, bro. That's like yeah, that drains. That, honestly, listening to it drained the fuck out of me, bro. Cause like, fuck. bro, he like he put himself a lot on that on that fucking project. Kate Trinado was on the too, right? Uh, I. Th- don't think so, actually. No, I don't, I don't think. So. I don't think so. I feel like I, I feel like I heard somewhere that Kate Trinado was on that, but I'm gonna have to look at the credits again. But like, yeah, yeah. no, I was like, after I listened to the damn album, it's like, bro, really got to understand yourself. Like, what are your desires? What is what are the things that are scaring you in life? What are the things you damn. want? Like, what are the things that like holding you back in life that can't get you in a proper position? That's why I say stuff like, okay, I. Wish that I could ball like them because I have a lot of it's friends. It's your desires, yeah. Yeah, these are desires that I would like, you know, because, like, I have friends that, like, they talk about, oh, we got going to fancy dinners or going to these fancy places and shit. But, like, bro, I'm not balling like that. I'm just a hustler. Bro. Yeah. I just think about my get, think about my bag and thing. For and sure. And getting, like, make sure I'm, I'm proper and my team is proper, you know? And, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a t- I don't know. It's a, it's a complicated song, but it's, like, that's kind of, like, there's a lot of aspects to it. But yeah, this is what I'm saying. Like being an artist, like if understanding what you're making, understanding how you're making it, you know, it's just like give your music a purpose type of shit. And yeah, try to help maybe figure out a way to like make sure the mass can understand it. But if they can't, that's cool. As long as you understand it at the end of the day, that's that's what matters. In my yeah, opinion, for bro. sure. That's that's what I, I think that's all it's I can, for you in, in the end, right? Like yeah, exactly. It's your diaries, your journals, mm-hmm. like we were saying before. So. Only only me, I can see what's in my head, not everybody else, bro. You know, yeah. people will be able to really relate to it in their own way, but you know. But yeah, like I was saying before, I, that's what I'm saying. Being an artist is like a tough journey, bro. Y'all, you better be ready to like. You it, it seems fun at first, but once you get to once you ex, like taking the lows yeah. from it. Nah, you as an engineer, like I see so many different artists like every day, and it's crazy, bro. Like me, the reason I started being an engineer is because I was I was an artist. Mm-hmm. I started out rapping. Oh shit! Say yeah, word. I didn't even see. It. Oh yeah, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You I didn't rapping. I didn't like it though. Like uh, first of all, I was really confident at first. Yeah. And that kind of fucked me over because like it wasn't that good. Yeah. And I only made like a couple songs, like maybe like five to eight songs or something. Mm. And um, during that time, I realized I really like mixing. Mm. Um, but it was like it's not for me. You know what I mean? There was a lot of work that got put into it. There was a lot of thought that got put into it, and it just wasn't for me. I liked how I can get creative with it and how I could express my emotions. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like it wasn't the type of image I wanted to have. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. I kind of fell in love with mixing after that. But it's like, yo, being an artist, it's like, I was only an artist for like a month or two, you know what I mean? Mm. And even then I was like, yo, fuck, like, this is crazy. And then yeah. being an engineer now, seeing so many different artists, like, struggling, either, like, doing their thing or struggling. But either way, I feel like you could be struggling either way. Mm. Even if you're, like, fucking any of these celebrity artists, Drake, you know, he's probably struggling a lot with being an artist. Because yeah, that shit's that. tough, bro. Like, it's a tough lifestyle, bro. It's that's tough. crazy. There's so much work that goes into it. And it's like, you're constantly working. It's like, it's being an entrepreneur. Yeah. But the brand is yourself you know yeah, you're it's literally you. marketing yourself and bro. like you got to be first of all you got to be camera ready all the time you know what i mean you got to be ready to talk to people all the time mm. i feel like you gotta if you portray a certain type of energy mm. like if you give off a certain type of energy you got to constantly have that energy whether it's like you're you're happy ass guy mm. like fucking i don't know i can't think of anyone but whether you're like a happy artist you got to be happy all the time in front of other people you know and oh, that's just hard nice. you can't it's impossible to be happy all the time <laughs> But you got to make it look like you're happy all the time. Exactly. And, bro, that shit... Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. That shit's just crazy, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't imagine that, bro. Yo, Not trust me, all. bro. The, like, uh, there's a lot of songs I fucking made during the yeah. during quarantine that made me realize, like, yo, honestly, being an artist sucks, bro. 
I hate this. I, I feel like, like you can your insecurities can get brought up a lot too, right? Like you probably you're probably second guessing yourself all the time. Like mm. you make a song and in the moment you're like, yeah, that's fire. You listen to it the next day, you're like, yo, will people actually fuck with this? Like exactly. you show it to your friends, your friends say it's fire, and like, are, are they lying to me right now? Like, is it fire? Is it not fire? You know, I feel like that's how I would be. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. I feel like definitely in the beginning phases, like yeah. you'll, you'll start going through all those type of things, but then. It gets to a point where it's like, yo, you can't be bothered with uh, with everybody. Else yeah, no, nah, that's bro. true though, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, you said, it's about yourself. It's about your thoughts. Mm, yeah, mm. for sure. And I think that's the one. That's that's the part like that's the hardest obstacle to overcome for people in my yeah. opinion, bro. Like people are not ready to accept the fact that like people will not not everybody will like your music, bro. You know, hundred like, percent, like, bro. If you're not prepared for not everyone to like your music, then like. I don't think you're ready to be an artist, fam. Like you can you you can have the desire for want, for wanting everyone to love your music. We have to accept the fact that they they won't. Mm-hmm. Or they, Accepting they that might fact, not. that I, I swear to God, that's the one. That's the one thing I swear that probably kills a lot. I of never that. heard that, but yeah, that's definitely true. It's, it's, it's a real thing, bro. It's yeah. a real thing. Oh shit, I hate fucking thinking about my own bars. But there was this fucking Drake beat I found on YouTube, and like it was, it, it reminded me of like a "Do Not Disturb." Do you ever listen to "More Life" by? Uh, I have Do Not Disturb. It sounds familiar, but I don't know. These are old Drake songs. I don't know. Yeah, like but. the one with fucking like Passion Fruit and shit. Like that's Yeah, yeah More Life. Yeah, I know More yeah, Life. Yeah. Like the cover was his dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was his dad? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Whoops. I, I had no idea who the fuck Like the guy was. in like the black and white yeah, shirt? Yeah, the black and white shirt with the cigar and yeah, shit. Yeah, that's his dad. I oh. think. I'm like almost 100% sure that's his dad. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay. I'm Drake actually. Sr., you know? Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to... Re- okay. This is why I'm saying I want to drop ge- kind of like little gems. Even if, as an artist, producer, and engineer, like there's like a certain bar I I I I spit on this beat that's like I think a lot of people will understand. It's like the verse starts like keep your circle small, standing tall, making sure everyone in the end ball flip the switch, w- flip the switch. Want my diamonds flashing, word of rowdy rich. Got some niggas in the shit that wanna quit. I'll admit I was one of those. That's just how it goes. You just want the jewelry, all the rings, and designer clothes with a lot of hoes. That's a lot of pros, but you gotta know this is real slow with a lot of lows. Like facts. That's uh, the you're basically describing like an artist's life right there. Yeah, bro. Like the, yeah. the shit you want the fast life, but you gotta realize if you can't accept the fucking lows of that shit, bro. So many lows, bro. So many. So sp- many. Like I feel like that goes with any type of business because being an artist, like we said before, is a, is it's your a own business. You exactly. know, you like you said, you're marketing yourself, mm-hmm. and uh, there's so many lows, bro. Even as an engineer, like for me, like there's lows too. So many lows, bro. Yeah, like if that. I don't have a session for like two days, I'm like, yo, what the fuck, fuck. am I doing, bro? Yeah, like, bro. yo, like deserve like no one wants me to be their engineer, you know? Yo, like, bro. It's just crazy, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. But you gotta stay up though, you know. Gotta have a positive attitude mm-hmm. and if you're not if you're not feeling the best go do shit that makes you feel good you know mm-hmm. what i mean like actual life shit because mm-hmm. i feel like it's really easy to get lost in uh in the sauce, in the sauce, in the sauce bro yeah, exactly. it's really easy to get lost in this shit and, yeah yeah you know? i realized um one thing I, I started doing a lot more is uh taking some walks just going out getting some fresh air that's good i'm always inside just working on the bee or working exactly on bro or something but I know I don't really step out of the house that much. So I just go outside, take a walk. As much as I hate the fucking downtown air, fucking I just take a walk. I love the city. I'm different. I love like I'm a I'm Damn. a city boy, bro. I love city. Wow. Okay. I love downtown. You wait, how often are you downtown? Are we are we considered downtown right now or no? I don't even know. We're considered the city, but we're not considered downtown. downtown though. I love the city basically. Yeah, like, this, okay. Cause yo, I was I grew up here. Mm. Oh, I was born in Quebec City. Yeah. Oh, but, what? Yeah. What the fuck you doing here? No, <laughs> no, 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 good, nah, good I choice, I, I moved here when i was like two years old so i don't remember living in quebec city right yeah, yeah. But we moved to ndg yeah. a couple streets away yeah, yeah. and then I, a couple years later i moved to a couple streets away again in ndg and i lived in like five six different houses in ndg but then we moved to the west for yeah. a little bit the west island yeah. and then moved back here uh like two years ago you know a year and a half ago mm-hmm. and i realized how much i love the city bro like the west like i fucking hate that shit and West Island, you're yeah, about oh, I fuck. hated it, bro. Like we lived there for a couple years. My family couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It's like we're meant to be in the city. Mm. And ever since we came back, everything's been so good, bro. Like I love this city so much. Yeah, bro. And no, no. me, it's the opposite. Like, yeah, I like the you know the fucking air when it's cleaner in the up north or whatever. But I feel like there's a different type of vibe in the city. Whether you're downtown, you're in NDG, you know, mm. it's a different type of vibe. I feel like everybody's like. Yeah, yeah. There's always way, gonna be you know? people around. There's always gonna be something going on. Yeah, it's literally. Just like, I don't know. It just feels right. Most you don't of the feel time. as alone. I feel mm. like you know. Because uh, I remember uh, Waterboy actually, uh, his parents lived in West Island, and I would go. I would call. I would 
like const- constantly like go visit him and, yeah. like, in the West Island with him to go see to go to his crib. Yeah. So like and the whole journey there was like bro an hour and a Yo, half. Yo, it's crazy. I, I hated it. Yo, it was terrible. But like it's crazy. It was an experience though. It made me understand like yeah, honestly if you live here you don't like life. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You don't like that's life. That's what if, it is, bro. Yeah, if you live in the West, you don't like life. That's what it is, bro. That's why I think that's why I've seen people recently talking about their stories. I'm about yo. If you live in the West, don't even bother talking to me. You're because you're a different breed. Yeah. It's just crazy, bro. From like growing up here to moving in the West, I see the different types of people, mm. the different types of just lifestyles. I don't like it, bros. Yeah, it's not. It's not that great, bro. Honestly. Not at all. I bet. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Point is, fuck the West Island. Fuck you know? the West <laughs> Island. That's the that's the overall base of that conversation. Yeah, fuck, fuck the, the West, West Island. Island, bro. That shit is uh, no. not the way to go. That was, <laughs> not at all. But yeah, man, uh, I would say this journey as uh, being an engineer right now is probably um, the mo- toughest journey ever I've ever realized. Why do you say that? I don't know, man. Because like I didn't see myself. I didn't. I never thought I, I like. Engineering will be take me to the position where I am now for like all these opportunities. Yeah, and shit. like meeting people, right? Meeting new yeah. people, meeting like connecting with a lot of artists. Like going, yo, when I go out to events, bro, I go there as a businessman. I don't go there just to enjoy myself anymore, bro. Bro, that's how I feel too. Like it's <laughs> crazy, bro. Just going to the Baha'i the other day. You were like, thinking about who keep pulling the record, eh? Yo, literally, bro. <laughs> like I literally, like yo, it's crazy. Uh, well, I met you, you know, thinking about fucking now. You know, you're on the podcast exactly. and shit. I met Trevor J. He came, like, that week mm-hmm. to uh, with a violin girl. I recorded a violin girl. Mm. Like, bro, like, I go there and I just m- met Me, people. And, exactly. And that's what you have to do. And that's what I keep telling artists. It's like, that's one thing. If, if you're, like, that type of artist that just stays in the room, depressed all the time, and writes songs, like, cool. Like, that sucks. But, like, good for you for doing your thing, whatever. But, yeah, but you have to go out still. Even if you don't like meeting people and going out, you have to, bro. Or else you'll never make it. Mm. Um, No matter what you do in exactly. this industry. Exactly. In the music bro, industry. Bro, unless you, like, stay... <coughs> oh, my bad. If you, like... Unless you fucking, like, step out out of your comfort zone yeah. and go out of your way to these type of things and get yourself going by, you know, applying yourself, bro, you're not going to be able to get anywhere, bro. I'm not going to lie. Facts. That's that. And that's Facts. Like, this is a real thing in life, fam. You, know, you got to be able to step out of your comfort zone. I tell people like, I'm okay. Listen, I'll just bring up a friend. I was just say, there's this friend I have. She's really good at photography. Like she's really good at finding the right angles and stuff. And, you know, I tell her, yo, pull up, pop, pop, pop out with me at this event for Rising Star. There's a good chance for you to take some pictures of these artists, talk to them, and get some work in with them, you know? But she's talking about, oh, but it's weird this, it's weird that. But I'm like, uh. bro, no, there's a chance for you to... Like, I, okay, I get that you're in school, but even doing a little thing like this could, like, could take you somewhere at least. If you, if you don't for think... Sure. Even if you don't think it won't get you anywhere, like, try. you won't know unless you try, right? It, at least it... Uh Get your portfolio going, you know what I mean? Add your, some pictures to your exactly. portfolio. Yo, even if you get, you start doing, like, some shoots for free, but, like, yo, it was the same shit for me. I started recording some people for exactly. free. But then now I'm fucking charging niggas 45 an hour, bro. Exactly. What the fuck? What the fuck I look like, bro? It's, it's all a matter of, like, patience. But, like, it's I guess it's different because you're in school and I'm fucking... I'm a, I'm a freelance guy. I'm just... If it's not music, I'm not doing anything else pretty much at this point. Like, I decided, like, yo, during this COVID shit, like... If I'm doing anything else besides music right now, then my life is a lie type shit. It really is. Because, like, I'm literally doing nothing else besides recording people, making beats for people, and mixing and mastering people. That's literally all I do. Because like, yeah. I, 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 I put all my marbles on the table. I put all my cards in. I'm all in. I'm all in with That's it. smart, though, you know. Um, honestly, I kind of, like, lately <laughs> I've gone into f- photography, mm-hmm. like, a month ago. Yeah. And whereas the, the past year, all I've been doing was engineering, like, every day Mm -hmm. um and then i got into photography like a month ago and then now i'm starting this podcast and it's like some days i feel like yo maybe i'm like kidding myself Mm -hmm. trying all this different shit but honestly i think it all works together you know like i'm not going as hard with photography as i am with engineering which is fine because i don't want it to take me the same places as engineering does but i feel like it's a good thing because there's events i've gone to just to take pictures but then i go there and I'm taking pictures, talking to people the whole time and shit. And then I'll, I tell them, oh, I'm an engineer too, by the way, whatever, you know. Mm. And they come like, oh, so he actually is an engineer. Mm. Like, he's not just saying that shit, you know. Mm. And then this, I'm trying to put pe- pe- people on like you, you know. Like, people that follow me, they'll see a podcast with you. They'll listen to that shit and they'll be like, oh, like, who's JT? You know what I mean? It might steal some clients from mm. me, you know. <laughs> but uh, It is what it is. But, yo. Fucking, I'm just trying to put people on, basically, you know. Yeah, like, bro, honestly. I think that's the one thing the city's missing, bro. Just, like, the support, bro. Yeah. Like, support is, like, 
weak as fuck in the city. I'm not gonna lie. Like, bro, it's not even funny. Like, it's not funny, bro. That's like, crazy. what's wrong with y'all niggas, bro? Like, y'all gotta step up your shit and just like give each other a ha- yo, be- yo. Honestly, bro, that's why I respect me and Waterboy, uh, like Waterboy, for wanting to make Baha'i because, like, bro, we're here for artists, bro. We're here for like, like putting y'all on and helping y'all grow. You know what I'm saying? Like. Because y'all are not willing to do it for yourself and anybody else in the city. So, like, we're the people that's willing to help put in the work to make sure you sound great and make sure you get out there proper, bro. Exactly. Because, like, nobody else, everyone only cares about themselves here. Not going to lie. Most people. Not everyone. Not everyone, but a lot of people. The people, you know who you are. You only really care about yourself. You're not caring about anybody else. Like, bro, like, I swear, if you think a nigga is hard in the city, nobody will ever repost them. Like, let's say... I, I, for one, think TGE is, like, TGE Truth or something. Like, TGE. Is, yeah, TGE Marks is fire. Yeah, I like Marks. I, I, like, I like their music, bro. Yeah. I really like the music. I, be, I remember in the beginning when I first listened to them, I was reposting their shit and see if people was going to fuck with it. Oh, yeah, people fuck with their music, bro. Like, But, like, nobody else really be strong support in the city but like that. They'll be now. quick to wish Drake a happy birthday on the story, though, you yeah, know? Yeah, they're always... Co- bro, no. Don't let me get into this conversation, bro. Yeah, be, I'm gonna, I'm going to be a mad-ass nigga, bro. It's way. a lot of, like, it's just... It's life, you know what I mean? That's how it is, though. A lot of people will will praise celebrities, but um, they won't help people around them get to that point, even mm. if they have more talent or the same amount of talent. You know, um, they won't let them get to that point. Mm-hmm. And you literally all you have to do is share a song or or, or post it there, bro. That's all you have to do. What I realized lately with the Instagram algorithm, and I've seen a lot of it, is like you have to like saving a post does a lot for the person. Mm. That's why um. Or like, like saving like the weird the little the little button there saving it that does a lot for for people like if you go to like to Baha'i right now save all their fucking posts mm-hmm. it'll help them oh, yeah. and uh yeah so like me um if I see an artist you know what I mean and I like their music I don't only like you know I press save too because mm. it helps me with the algorithm so oh okay like, there's a lot of shit people can do out here for free commenting liking sharing but saving they choose not to do they it. choose not to they choose either to scroll past it or just to double click it mm. which honestly does nothing like likes don't really do anything you know what yeah. i mean and and then we're just talking about instagram we're not even talking about youtube twitter, uh twitter Snapchat, anything bro like there's so much you can do for free if you fuck with an artist but now nah, you'll be quick to tell them yo i fuck with your music you're fire i, I hope you go places but they do nothing bro and it's 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 okay because it's life you know yeah um, you just have to accept the fact as an artist or as an engineer producer whatever you have to accept the fact that People will tell you that they want to see you go far, and they they will tell you that your shit's fire, but they're not willing to put all their support. You know mm, exactly, um, and it's like unless you, I guess you give unless you give them a reason to, then there's no reason. But like, if you, really- I mean, uh, like I feel like it's a pretty obvious reason. It's like mm. see the people around you pop off maybe they'll bring you with them you know yeah, what I mean? exactly maybe maybe but you know like if there's someone that's been supporting you for since like day one like why not bro obviously not yo but real question though when you record someone like how are you when you record them are you say you're just like you're just literally there to press record and call it a day no basically i treat like you know this is like a complicated conversation actually i try to talk about it with my girl she doesn't get it but i feel like there's like the word producer yeah there's an old version of the word and there's a new version the yeah. new version is like beat maker yeah. the old version is that person in the studio telling the artist like what to do because the artist has the talent um they have the the vibe everything but they don't know how to like put that into the music mm-hmm. and producers used to like used to be the word for people in the studio like helping them right mm-hmm. so i feel like i'm kind of like that a little bit kind of like you're, um, the co- you're coaching them in there in yeah if they need it you know mm-hmm. what i mean um so like yeah, obviously I'm pressing record. That's my job, but I feel like it's also my job, which I don't consider myself getting paid for it. I consider myself getting paid for it. engineering. That's it. But I feel like it's also part of my job to just you know tell them, oh, like maybe you should try it this way. Um, maybe you should do it this way. Like mm. that was cool, mm-hmm. but do it again. You know what I mean? Or yeah. add a layer on top of that. Respect, you know, like um, respect. Still, and with you have to say it, though in the most like complimentative complimentive way yeah like like the nicest way possible you know yeah. because you want them to succeed yeah and you don't want them to feel like shit because if you make an artist feel like shit in the studio they'll lose all confidence and their shit will be trash exactly. so you gotta tell them nicely like yo like try it again i i, I promise you this will be better mm-hmm. and then they're like oh shit like it is better like mm-hmm. cool and then they that boosts their confidence mm-hmm. um so you have to be like that bro as an engineer like it's not even a question because if you're just there to press record Everybody would keep be getting paid out here to do Yo, that. Yo, for guy. real. But, yeah. like, you got to know. And I feel like I'm still kind of learning a little bit about this. But you got to know who's good, who's not. 
um mm. who has a certain type of talent for this versus that mm. like if an artist is coming in here trying to do one type of genre or one type of song and i'm like yo you'd be fire on like this type of shit mm. they go home whatever they write a song the next time they come on that type of shit is even more fire mm. and then boom they're like yo like thank you you yeah. know like, yo bro the, i think the number one thing i've learned from being an engineer so far this past year definitely when people come to me like yo i feel like i've learned a lot just recording with you bro like Bro, yeah, because I do exactly what you do. I'm basically like the producer and engineer in that. Yeah, room, you, you have know? to be. You have to be. I feel, you have to be, but I know not every engineer in the city is like. Well, that one thing though, I learned at school. Yeah. Um, like my teachers tell me, it's funny. They tell they tell all of us. They're like, as an engineer, your job is to just shut the fuck up and press record and shit. Like just to be there, oh, making God. it sound good, and like that's it. You you can't like eat. You can't do shit. You can't talk. Like all this. Bro, that's like the opposite of what I do, and it's working out pretty fucking well for me. You know what I mean? Like no me, I like I tell the artists like, yo, I'm not gonna, yo, if they don't want to hear it, if they want to do their own shit, they don't want to listen to me, I'll stop talking. But if I could tell they want to get better, and they trust my opinion and everything, then I'll tell them a whole bunch of different shit, and it helps them so much. Like why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to help someone? Exactly. You know, like why would I just be there, sh- like shutting up, that's not so saying stupid, nothing? Bro. I know, bro. It's crazy. Like, if I hear the potential of this man's I'm recording. I'm going to tell him, yo, I'm going to need you to try this and tell me how that sounds. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Bro, because. And they think you're weird at first yeah. for thinking about it, but it sounds so so much more fire. So mm-hmm. you got to have an ear for that, you know? Yeah, because for me, <laughs> I'm a weird ass nigga, but it's like, when I give a nigga advice, it's like, I, 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 I get hype as fuck. <laughs> yo, get, literally, you feel like a nerd, eh? Yeah, I yeah. get super hype in that chair because like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now, yo, that shit was fire, dog. <laughs> yo, every time I get hype when I tell them to try some other shit or they 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 record me some shit. I remember the yeah. this one dude I recorded. You know, uh, John John. Yeah, yeah. I recorded him a few days ago, bro. This nigga is insane, bro. Yeah, I love his I love his uh, new style. He's been trying this. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he wants me to be saying it, but like, yeah, like this new. Like, I remember he came to record this. He found his beat and like, bro. This is some next level shit. You need to keep going, push that. Let me finish this mix with it. I'm gonna send it to you again. You let me know how that shit sound. And he's like, "Yo, I need to record. I need to work with you more often." I'm like, "So let's okay, send more, bro." Because like, bro, I'm here to make sure. Like, I, I I know of course I'm just getting a bag, but it's like, bro, like that's boring. But I don't want to just get a bag and call it a day, bro. Even if it's draining on me, I still want to make sure like the artist that comes in that comes in to record with me, they're, like they're gonna be like they're gonna feel like they're gonna be the next up. At yeah, the, end of the day type shit, bro. Cause like I want to make them feel like it's like it's that's how it's gotta be. If you want to believe like you're gonna be an artist, bro, like you need someone to help, like let you understand, like yo, I can do this for real, for real. Cause I got an engineer that believes in me at least. You know, I yeah, feel exactly. like if you're gonna get into the artist stuff, you gotta get gotta work with someone that at least believes in your talent. It it works exactly like that because let's say they don't have anyone else supporting them in their corner. At least they got you. You know the engineer, and mm. I feel like you know somewhat you know the artist best you know mm. like they're they're there uh there's some artists that will come all the time and they record with you all the time and then like you know their music best you know what they perform at best like mm. you know what like how they sound you know what i mean you know what type of fucking effects to put on their voice and all this mm. shit what type of plugins and i feel like you need someone like that as an artist um that's why a lot of like your clients will never come to me and a lot of my clients will never come to you or like any other engineer for that matter, mm-hmm. because they feel comfortable with me, they feel comfortable with you, they feel comfortable with Golden Child or mm-hmm. or whoever, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it it takes a lot of trust. I feel yeah. like to be someone's engineer, yeah, exactly. um, you gotta earn their trust, and then and then they gotta you gotta earn their loyalty too. Yeah. You gotta earn their trust and loyalty because it's hard. It's a hard game, but it's like yeah. yo, this is it's kind of what you, you signed up for it, bro. You signed yo, up. Yo, hundred percent. I love it. I love yeah, it so I, much, bro. I love this game, bro. I wouldn't play any other game than this, yo. bro. Cause like, like the engineering game is a business and a yeah. and, and just a, a, a playground for me, in my opinion. Like everybody can come play in it, but at the same at the same time, I I, I own everything in this bitch, bro. I can do everything I can, and I'm trying to help Facts. you. I'm trying to make sure you get to that sound too, as well, bro. And it's like, ah, oh, shit. There's a point I was gonna get to where you were talking. But like, ah, what the fuck was it? My brain lost its train of thought, bro. Um, that's tough. That's tough, bro. That's I, tough. Yeah, I definitely forgot. I forgot heavy, bro. <laughs> I don't remember. It's all good. I if you remember. think about it, let me know. But my bad. Yeah, but yeah. um, you. Yeah, I feel like though, as an engineer, at least for me, I don't know how you feel, but I've definitely got kind of lost in like the rabbit hole where it's like. 
I can't stop upgrading my equipment. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. bro, like, for, like the studio you see right now, it didn't look like this like two months ago. It didn't look like this a year ago. You know, I just keep upgrading my shit, mm. and it's it's good at a certain point. But also, I feel like a lot of people in my life had like kind of brought this to my attention, and I kind of brought it to my attention that it's a lot of money. And yeah. bro, like, it's like I gotta stop with that shit because like I like my studio right now. I love it, but I feel like there's always like, oh, I could upgrade this, I could upgrade that. Mm. I want it to be perfect. Mm. And then people, artists will come and they won't even realize the difference, you know? <laughs> like, my monitors now versus my monitors before, and these are, like, triple, quadruple the price. Mm -hmm. My artist, like, the artists that come don't tell, a, can't tell the difference. They're just louder to them, you know? Yeah, exactly. And to me, it's like, fuck. Like, I just, like, you know, like, it's, it yeah. is for me, but I got to make sure, like, other people notice that shit, too, you know? And that's why I kind of got to stop buying equipment because, bro, that shit's expensive and most people don't even realize the difference. Exactly, so it's like, bro. like, my acoustic panels... To them, it sounds the same. You yeah. know, it's like fuck. Like, yeah, bro. It's more enjoyable for me though. Yeah, exactly. But, no, yeah. so don't worry. If you love it at the end of the yeah. day, it's fine. Because you know, like yeah. you should only really upgrade when you feel like it's time for that upgrade. In my opinion, you know, yeah. like the stuff I have at the with the stuff we have at the studio right now, I think is like we've been I've been rolling it with the with, with, since like what since summer or something like that. Since like yeah, since the start of summer, and it's just like bro. I haven't thought about. I've, obviously, I've thought about upgrading it. I've been trying to save up for the funds to try to upgrade soon for something like some new monitors or something. But it's like every time people come through, it's like, bro, it's the same shit. Like you're, you, you yeah. will hear the same quality as the next person. Yeah, and they will still give the same compliment as the next person. You know, so I, I feel like a good, a good, uh, a good place to put your money in though is plugins. Oh yeah, you know, like that. compared to like a lot of people. We'll, t we'll say different mm. they'll say like oh like buy this preamp buy this fucking compressor like outboard gear and shit mm. it's like 10 racks 5 racks yeah. you know Who has that and and right? you can buy the same version as a plug-in for like 100 bucks Facts. and or you can crack them I don't know I don't know what you prefer you know what me I buy all my plugins, but I feel like that's a really a good place to put your money in as an engineer mm -hmm. um, or even as a producer you know VSTs mm -hmm. and shit but mm -hmm. plugins are like it's what makes the sound, you know, like exactly. besides the engineer, the person behind it, their creativity, their ideas, mm -hmm. the plugins is really what matters. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you'll see the most difference, I feel like. And I believe that 100%, bro. Like, especially when it comes to being a producer and getting new VSTs. Yeah. Bro, Arcane, I have been abusing the fuck out of that for at least a good six months. Like, I have not Ooh. stopped using it for every beat I make. Every beat I, you hear. They must now, have a huge sound bank, though. Oh, bro, their sound bank is huge. And, like, it's literally loops you can like manipulate at your at will fam and it's like that's crazy they came out with this new kit called brainwaves bro i've I just made a rock beat with that fucking shit with that one legit i don't know if you if anybody saw my story on that one but like i put po i posted yesterday like me and uh talia oh i've seen that yeah yeah, yeah me yeah, and her I made a rock that. beat together and um it's funny funny how you're how, how you're, i'm talking about it now because she just texted me right now saying she sent it to somebody that actually wants that beat right now i'm like whoa say less. yo i made an alternative uh like pop punk type beat mm. like machine gun kelly type shit oh shit. that shit boom right away someone wanted it like because people it's fuck with that exactly like it's people different. are tired of just that regular hip-hop yeah trap shit yeah yeah it's uh, because uh it's all good but yeah people are getting tired of that even me i love like the other day uh two days ago mm. i had a girl come to make way she she was also like billy eilish mm -hmm. type shit yeah yeah and it was so much fun to record compared to like regular hip hop, like one track, whatever. Yeah. This is like layers on layers, and it's mm. like different sounds and shit. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, bro. Um, it's refreshing, you know. Yeah, bro. When you when you have when you end up doing something out of your com comfort zone, it's like it's like a breath. Yeah, it's a breath of fresh air, bro. Because it's like I yeah. haven't done this before. I re I re recently recorded a uh, 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 um. Kind of like a rock, yeah, alternative artist. Kind of, I would say like kinda, pop punk. Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. I would say so. His name is Blue. Mm. I, he actually came here too a couple of times. Uh, oh. He's fire. He's oh yeah, fire. same yeah. word. Oh, like yeah, bro. I recorded Battle with him. of the Engineers. Huh? <laughs> I said Battle of the Engineers. Battle of the Engineers. <laughs> now he's fire this. though. Yeah. Yeah, he's fucking fire. He came uh, with a song called Degrees um, or Magic. I forgot what it was called. He he, called, he hasn't decided on a name, but it's like <laughs> it's definitely a song I've never. Is. I've never like recorded that type of song before and or mixed it nevertheless no like nevertheless but it's like bro it's cool this is hard bro and like i'm try i'm making this sound so far and he's already fucking with it bro i have barely gone to the real mix of this shit yet and i'm like yeah 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 this is the type of shit i need in my vault right now I yeah so. yeah exactly it's good for like to diversify yourself you know um like on my website I have a section called Mixed by Me, and yeah. it's like 
different songs like my favorite songs that are released that i've mixed mm. and i try to put the most different type of shit in there you know like mm. not just the same song over and over again but whether it's like fucking regular hip-hop some drill shit maybe mm -hmm. some pop some r&b you know course, some some just alternative a whole bunch of different shit and that's how it's got to be because people come to you and be like oh he's only a hip-hop engineer he's only a r&b engineer whatever mm -hmm. but nah like I us engineers, know. we can do anything, bro. We can really do anything. Yeah, like, it, it all depends if you're willing to trust us to get, like give us exactly, sound, exactly. Like I had these kids come to Makeway like a month ago, and they pulled up, and we had to wait outside for a second because uh, like another uh, like Buds was in the in the session already. Yeah, <coughs> and so we had to wait like three minutes, whatever, and we were just talking there, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Yo, so like I don't know if you feel comfortable with this, but like basically like we record some like alternative shit." Um, like alternative pop punk like i don't know if you could do that whatever and i'm like bro like what the fuck like i love doing that shit you know like i'm not just a hip-hop engineer you know they just assume that a lot of artists assume that because most engineers here or most artists here only do hip-hop that's true but so so they'll think that the engineers only do hip-hop but we can do anything was that a live band or they just record? no it was just two kids um one of them was the producer and then one of them was the artist and it was just some cool pop punk shit and they thought I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't know if I could do it or not. And it ended up being really fire. And they trusted me. You know, like you said, you got to trust the engineer. Of course. And it was really cool. Like, I love it's that cool type of shit. You know, it's just fresh air, bro. Like yeah. you said, like, it's just a refresher. And uh, it made you realize, like, yeah, how much you love doing this. For real. Because, like. Every session makes me realize that. Yeah. For real, bro. I mean, most sessions. Nah, there are sessions where, like, bro. I yeah, here, literally, bro. bro legit. But, you trust. There will be sessions about that, you know? <laughs> It's like, even when it's yeah. like making a beat, it's like, yo, why did I even make this? It's hot garbage. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It's like a waste of time. But I mean, same time though, it made you realize like, right, maybe I shouldn't be doing this type of shit mm -hmm. or maybe I shouldn't work with this artist anymore, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then that's, that helps you in the long run. Yeah. You kind of like, the more you go through that type of shit, the more you realize these red flags and realize yeah, you cannot come record. Like yeah. There's a, like there's different types of red flags, Yeah, but in the end, it's all the same. Like, it's all the same. It's just like. If you can't pinpoint them out, it's like, uh, you, I don't know if you're ready for it type shit, bro. Because I already had, like, what, one person come through. That's, like, I definitely did not want coming back. And I, I think he told me about he wants to come back. I'm like... Yeah, so how do you approach that type of situation? Do you do you lie to them, tell them an excuse? Like, oh, I'm busy. And then they hit you up again, you say, I'm busy. Or do you just say, like, nah, I don't want you coming back? I I haven't got to the point of the talking to him yet. But So this is your first client that you didn't want coming back? Okay. And honestly, I'd probably tell him, like, I probably would tell him, like, don't come back, Haiki. Like, I, if there's anything I'm not going to take is disrespect and yeah. you you not respecting my time. Like, because we have, when you come record with us, it's like, it has to be three hours. And people's like, oh, but three hours is so long and that's a lot of money. But, like, bro, three hours goes by so fast. Oh, it's the minimum for you guys? Yeah, yeah. It has okay. to, like, yeah, like, because uh, we have, like, separate time, like, time slots. Okay. Like 10 to 1, 2 to 5, and 6 to 9. Like, yeah, it has to be with three hour sessions type shit. So, but people will You can't do more, you can't do less? You can't do more, you can't do less. You can oh, pay for an well, extra hour because that the that one hour in between is like my quick little break to like, re, like refresh. Re, yeah, refresh and recharge myself. But like, if they want to pay an extra hour, it depends. Honestly, like, let me tell you something. I don't know if you'd be down to do it, but me, I've had like nine hour sessions, mm -hmm. 10 hour sessions, seven hour sessions, and bro, it's. It's so much fun. Like, maybe you're not the type of person, maybe you need that break. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like, like, maybe, oh, shit. It doesn't happen that often, you know, where there's, like, a nine-hour session. But when it does, mm. it makes me realize, like, yo, like, I can do this shit every fucking day, 12 hours a day for the rest of my life. And I feel like you get a lot more done. You connect more with the artists. Mm. There's just a lot of good shit that happens when you do long-ass sessions. Mm. I feel like some artists wouldn't find three hours enough. That's crazy. Like, I didn't know that, that you guys only did, like, Three hour sessions. Yeah, we only do That's three fuck. hour sessions. Yo, people actually complain. It's like, yo, I want more time. Cause like, That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, the amount of sessions I've had that are four hours to nine hours, everything in between that is crazy. Like, mm. I've even had like one hour sessions. All the time I have one hour sessions. Mm. But I understand why you wouldn't want like a one hour session. Yeah. It might feel like a waste of time. Exactly. Me, it happens all the time. Mm. But uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of your clients would like five hours, four hours. You oh, know? no, of course they would. That's why they would probably take like that session. Let's say if yeah. they had the two to five, they would also probably take the six to nine too. But there's only there was only one day I was fully booked and each session was a different person. And that day killed me dog i bet it did it yeah killed me fucking recorded fucking i recorded love star at, at 10 like it was 10 a.m to 1 1 uh 1 a.m type shit so it was like what 
how long is that? I don't even know how long that is. That's like what, twelve hours? No, nah, it's more than twelve hours. It's fourteen. Three. Fifteen. Oh shit. Well ten, I think. I think. I don't know. My well, math. Three wrong. three times four? Twelve. Twelve. It's twelve hours. Yeah, it's twelve hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean not including the breaks, I guess. Yeah, yeah. not including the breaks. Yeah, because yeah. uh because I'm just trying to think about each session. Yeah. And one of them was that wasn't even paid. They were they just came through just like check out the vibe there. Like See, I've had people ask me that, bro. They're like, yo, um, they're like, yo, can I come through uh, for a session? But like, just to check out the vibe, you know, for a quick 20 minutes, one hour. Like, I just want to see how you work and shit. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. Maybe I should do that. Mm-hmm. But I've only gotten that like once. And um, every other artist, they don't care. They're like, I right, like, I trust you. You know, they see my work on Instagram, on my website, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I right, like, uh, I'm gonna pull up, book a session. And then there's this one guy who said, yeah, like, I want to come. And just check out how you work. It's kind of weird to me. I don't know. Mm. I never really got that. It really depends because uh, one, it de- one depends who the person is. That's one. Uh, and two, do you feel like the, this person coming in to check out the vibe here? Would do you think they're willing to come here more after and put money into? Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. it's really more of a risk factor. It's more of a it's, it could be yeah. a high risk, high reward type of thing or. High risk, no reward. Yeah. For me, I, I, I don't know if it was a high risk, no reward type of situation for that. I'm still trying to figure that out. But for the most part, like, at the end of the day, what I lost more was my time, obviously. Yeah, but, exactly. Which but, is the most important thing, though, uh, yeah, as an course. engineer. Of course. And, um, but honestly, um, I mean... I, we ended up like recording some stuff that day. It wasn't that it wasn't that bad, I guess. But it was just it was the end of the day. I was super tired. I was drained. Yeah. I couldn't really focus anymore. It's like it's diff- like I get what you're saying. Like when you're working with one person for multiple hours, like it's chill because it's been the same person forever. But when it's different people every three hours, no, nah, yeah, fuck all that. Bro. Your brain gets fried, bro. Yeah, I've why. had some of those. I've even had days where it's like I have like a three hour session here, or whatever, and then after this session ends. I have one hour to get to make way to do another like three four hour session, mm. and it's like fuck like. How do you have the time, I, bro? Like I've lost honestly in the past couple months. This is like weird to say, but in the past couple months I've lost a lot of weight just because I don't have time to eat. You know what I mean, bro? Like, same <laughs> like yo, as an engineer, it's it sucks to say, and a lot of my friends, my mom, they tell me, my girl, they tell me like yo, like you gotta eat. Like mm. your life is like your health is more important than a little bit of money, you know, but. To me, it's like it's a grind, you know. It's, like it, it's a grind, bro. It's, it's not fun. even about the money. Sometimes it's just like yeah. you just love your work so much, bro. Bro, it's it's just like I'd rather be in the studio right now, working with this artist, doing what I like to do. Than spending, I'd rather do that than like yeah, spending ten minutes to try to eat some food. Yo, <laughs> literally, bro. Like it's I know it's fucked up. It's fucked it's up. not healthy at all, but it's no. it's life, bro. Like I know there's a lot of careers, there's a lot of people out there that feel the same way. Um, you know, I feel like I've watched so many movies where it's like a girl, you know, she works at like a fucking law firm or something and it's like, they don't have time to eat because they're so busy fucking mm. writing up contracts yeah, and exactly, shit. Yeah. It's the same thing, bro. It's the it's same like, shit. Same shit applies as being an engineer. Literally. Fan. And it's like, I don't know. Do I, I have 30 minutes in between a session. Do I fucking go try to find something to eat? Do I order food or like, do I mix a little bit more of that last session? You know, do I mix a little <sighs> bit more like... Until that's that sacrifice you have yeah, to make, you know? It is. And, like, I don't know. I feel like, uh, how old are you now? I'm 18. Bro, you're 18? Yeah. Ma- ma- bro, I've been <laughs> thinking you're, like, 25, nah, bro. what? Yo, Nah, what I'm 18. Hell? I'm 18. Bro, you are youngin', bro. What yeah. the fuck are you doing? Yeah, eat, bro. What the nah, fuck I'm are you doing? I'm grinding, bro. I'm on my grind. Yeah, you but still, I mean? you got to get some food in you, bro. Like, nah, me? for real. Bro, look, I'm 23. And I, I, I there's no way. Hold up, there's no way you thought I was 25, bro. That's cap. Like between 20 to 25. That's, that's what I was crazy. Thinking. I was bro. thinking about 20 between 25, not 18. Yeah, I, ju- under- I just turned 18. Yeah, dog, that's cap, bro. I turned 18 August 29th. Yeah. Life is a lie, bro. These youngins are going crazy nowadays. Yo, bro. I have to, bro. No one else is doing it. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like I get that a lot of time. Like the. People work with me for like five months, like as an artist, and I'm mm. as like me as an engineer. Yeah. And then after those five months, like, yo, by the way, like, I never asked you, how old are you? Uh, like, I'm 18. Or at the time, I'll say, oh, I'm 17, 17, you know? And they'd be like, like, what the? I've been trusting this kid to do my fucking songs for this like, long. Like, that's just crazy. Think about that for a second. Yeah. They've been, y'all, they've been trusting. Wow. That's hard. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I gotta give you props for that one, fam. Thank you, fam. I gotta give you props for that because that's hard, bro. I'm trying to do my best I can, like I said before, to put people on, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, to help yeah. people. 
because there's a lot of there's a lot that could come out of this city mm. that people aren't really letting they letting it pass it. you know yeah they're not pushing it and uh i feel like i kind of made it my job to at least help in a mm. certain like a little way mm. um yeah and then plus i like doing it so yeah bro you I mean, know? of course bro like when you're young trying to do something you love bro it's yeah. like it, it becomes a different type of hunger like 100 percent. either you can choose to starve yourself and keep grinding or you can fucking do both and still find a way to get yourself out there you know exactly but damn 18 what the fuck bro i'm 23 dog and i and i feel tired all the time bro that's the thing like i i feel like i'm I have to take advantage of it while I'm young. You know yeah. what I mean? In a couple years from now, I won't be able to do what I'm doing right now. And so I might as well go as hard as I fucking can. That's smart, though. And, uh, you know, like, today, for example, I woke up late. Like, when you called me, I woke up, like, not too long before that. Mm. Um, And I didn't have time to shower. And sh well, I had time to shower, but I didn't have a lot of time. Mm. And I feel like I've been making that sacrifice a lot lately where it's, like, I wake up, and then within the hour I wake up, I got to go do something. Because I try to get the most sleep I can because I go to bed really late. Whether I'm in a session, whether I'm mixing, whether I'm editing some pictures, whether I'm fucking setting up the podcast, there's a lot of shit I got to do. And um, I feel like I got to make that sacrifice right now while I'm young, mm -hmm. while I have the energy mm -hmm. to just do the most I can in each 24 hour blocks I have, you know? Yeah. Um, that's what it is. Yo, that's crazy. Yeah. Because like every time I wake up, I feel like I, I, I see my scheduled in a way of like how I have my sessions, right? So... 10 to 1. What am I doing between 10 to 1 if I'm not recording? I'm recording only if I, if, I, if that's the case. Yeah. Like, it's really like, yo, what are you doing at 2? What are you doing at 6? What are you doing at 10? Yeah. I only think about my studio times yeah. instead of like specific times of the day now because like, like, because th these three times of the day, like, these blocks of the day are the days I'll be working. So, if I'm not doing anything at those blocks, that's when I was like, okay, I'll throw in something during that time. And just. And is it seven days a week? Yeah, every day, okay. every day, every day. I can't imagine working like that, bro. Like, I mean, it's cool. Yeah. I feel like it'd be better. It's just for me, like, I'm on call. Like, if someone calls me, like, an hour before, like, no, nah, like, I'd say, like, three hours before, like, yo, can I have a session tonight at 6 o'clock? If I'm not busy, yeah, pull up. If I'm busy, pull up tomorrow mm. at this time, whatever. Like, I feel, I feel like that could be really good, you know, um, to, like, organize yourself. Mm. It could help a lot. But uh, I just, I don't know. I can't do it because me, like, I like... I'm not the type of person where it's like I plan out everything. Um, I'm really bad at like time management. Yeah, that's um, that's you see that's what come, these are things that you get you understand as you get older. Yeah, perhaps, exactly. So. Like right now, I have all the time in the world. Yeah, exactly. you know, uh, especially last year, I didn't go to school last year. Right now, I'm in music technique, but it's not that heavy. Mm. Like it's really not that heavy at all. And uh, so last year, all I was doing was sessions or mixing people that emailed me songs, and that's I feel like it kind of fucked me over a little bit because now i'm like i could accept i feel like i could accept anybody at any time yeah which is not the best you know i still yeah. gotta spend time with family my girl and shit yeah, bro, and um, that's the thing, so. it's it's tough you know it it takes a lot out of your days like it's it is it is your life you know once you're an engineer um it's your life it like is, it takes is. over you do you don't realize everything kind of takes time out of your day without without even you realizing exactly but that's why i appreciate like like you know water boy and the rest of the team like kind of help like help like we trying to help shape like the how we were gonna do shit because like yeah. time management is huge. It's bro. the most important thing. Well, not the most, but it's really it's, important. It's definitely important because you gotta make time for everything else. Like, bro, yeah. last week, my uh my boy uh, Jay Noir, shout out to him, man. Thank you for giving like get like putting on a fucking show last weekend, bro. That shit was hard. I Thank saw that you. on your story. Yeah, bro. There a lot of people good. Perf yo, uh, you heard of Ray Deville? Probably not, eh? No, I heard that name somewhere. I yeah, but it's like yo. Like, that was the first time I've come back to a show just as being a spectator instead of the one performing. And I'm like, whoa. People are, like, people know these guys' songs, bro. And they're all, That's like, cool. singing along and fucking getting hype. I'm like, wow. It's, like, it was so funny because I came out from, like, just just some, just some smoking. So, it was, like, it was a whole different yeah. vibe. I was, like, hi. Just, like, wow. This is a movie right now, bro. This is insane. I haven't been to a show as a spectator in years, bro. bro. you got to, man. It's a different experience, bro. At least, like, shows like that. It's huge shows where it's, like, dark. This is like way out there and just like I can't barely. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the last show I went to was the last show I went to where I wasn't an engineer or a photographer yeah. was Killy in 2018. Oh shit. Um where was he performing at? Oshiaga? M Tellis. M Tellis. M, M, M T L yeah, M Tellis. Yeah, M Tellis. Um, shit. Like this was 2018 or oh, 2019 fuck. or something. Was this after this was after Kilimanjaro, eh? Yeah, way after. Yeah, this was like when Killy was like a little bit past that point where 
everybody was listening to him, you know. Yeah, so uh, Surrender Your Soul, Killy. It was, it was basically that Killy. It was what? Surrender Your Soul. That was his, uh, I think I'm was, not sure. I didn't listen to him too much. I just went because it was cheap. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was like, yo, that song, it's like Rari or some shit. What is that? Skirt, rah, rah, I don't know. Rari, da, 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 da. Yeah, it was like a, like six months after that, I think. Exactly. Oh no, that's Kilimanjaro. Oh, that's, oh, that's Kilimanjaro. so it's not that. It's a yeah. uh, it's a different song. Bro. Might be no sad, no bad, Killy. That's probably like surrender your soul, Killy. That's a, that's the Killy everybody. It was knows after that. that. It was, it was after this, bro. This was summer 2019 or 2018. Okay, yeah, know. definitely after. Summer yeah. 2019 or 2018, I can't remember. Yeah, it was stuff, a while ago, basically. Yeah, his stuff so. wasn't really all that great to me after that. To be yeah, honest. exactly. Yeah, after that album is um, whatever. But it was cool because like Nav was there too. Nav was performing oh, too. Shit. I forgot. I just remember that right now. Yeah, bro, but Nav performed. I, I'm telling us, it was uh like I remember he was performing that song he has with Lil Uzi it was uh Habits. That's Habits. a fire yeah, song, bro. I love that it's song. not actually Lil Uzi on SoundCloud. It is. Yeah. But on Apple Music is just Nav. Yeah. But that was a fire song. Yeah, I love and that I was like song. popping out at the time too. Yeah. So it was like uh, there's this one bar he says. Uh, this just it rela- I related to it, to it so much, but yeah. it was fire. Um, but yeah, bro. So like now I just go to shows as like a photographer, as an engineer. It's different. I can't enjoy it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. I definitely got to go to more shows where I'm, like, yeah, actually yeah. listening yeah. and enjoying myself with people I like, you know? Exactly. Um, or just alone. But. Yeah. But like I was saying before, yeah. um, um, last week, it was, um, yeah, my boy Jay had that show. And um, there was a chance for me to get a session in before me being able to pull up for that. But I was actually lucky. I was lucky because the session finished at 9. And I could have gone to Laval after my bad. The show was in Laval? The show was in Laval, yes. What the fuck? I went by myself. I was supposed to go with my girl, but it was too late for her to go. Like, it was, like, late in terms of, like, she doesn't like to stay up late. So, yeah. Yeah, so I had to go by myself. Sad face. But That's all okay. good. You yeah. enjoyed it more, probably, no? No. I don't know if I enjoyed it. I don't know. It's hard. That's hard to, that's hard to scale. I like, enjoy know. the music more. Maybe yeah. you're actually listening instead of being, like... Having Yo, to worry, fire, yeah. Like, instead of having to worry about, so yeah, I guess. Honestly, yeah, you're right. I, I yeah. guess you can think about it like that. I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. Honestly, it's because like on my way there, I was such in a bad mood, bro. It's like I didn't even want to go anymore. Cause one, I found out the location was in Laval. Yeah. Like a few hours before, I'm like, bro, I already paid for the ticket, bro. What the fuck? I don't feel like going to Laval. But you know what? So you bust to Laval. I, I Metro bust to Laval, yeah. God damn, bro. bro. Yo, because cause J- the guy um who hosted the show uh did it with Rising Star because uh the guy records with me, Jay Noir. Like I respect that man a lot because he has like, he has a super hustle mentality, bro. And like he records with me like pretty often, so it's like, yo, I have to sh- come and show out some support for this man. Yeah. I fuck with his music and I fuck uh, what we've been doing together, and I want to see like what the fuck is going on with the show. And bro, this guy has fire. a real support system behind him as an artist. Like, he's been doing it since like 2010, fam. Like this guy has been in it, in it. Bro, that's crazy. So, so like, uh, I, that's what I'm saying. I had to pop out and see what was good. Like, bro, people were like singing along to this man's lyrics and everything. Yeah, bro, but he was gassed at the end of that. But like, yo, <laughs> it's stu- it's stuff yeah. like that event that sh- made me appreciate like what the fuck I love doing for a living, fam. Because 100%. like, I can meet new people. I can enjoy myself. Watch these people perform their songs. You know, if I link with them, I don't. If I do, that's amazing. You know, might as well go out and meet them though. You know, right? Exactly. So. That's the, that's the goal at the end of it. But it's like at the yeah. end of the day, like I made time. I'm out of my day to like keep working instead to just go see one of my clients perform but like he, i wouldn't even see him as a client he has like that's a homie now yeah type shit, you know like it's a I, fine line between clients and friends for <laughs> yeah, sure yeah and i don't want to do that for like everybody because that shit that's gets, gets fucking annoying bro because i know that has to ask you for discounts or that's like, what it is so get or or like to me at least i kind of start feeling like oh i owe this person a discount yeah, I and I shit. don't, bro. I don't Holy owe nobody shit. shit. Yeah, yeah like, no, ain't nobody you, so man. I realized that in the past couple of weeks, um, or maybe months, that it's just no matter how close I am with that client, no matter how often they record. Because last year, I would have clients that like, coming all the time. Like this, like certain type of clients that would either send me songs all the time or come all the time. I'd be like, oh, you deserve deals now. But it's like I don't owe nobody shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized that everybody's the same, bro. Like all these, all these clients, like whether they're, I, I think their music's more fire or I, I like them more as a person or I don't, everybody deserves the same price. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's what it is. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you got, yeah, but and it all understands like, it all starts like knowing your worth too, you know? Yes. Yeah. So knowing your worth, that's, that's a big thing. So yes. like when you, if you start giving this person shit, then everybody needs to start getting it because they realize. Exactly. They and they're like, someone's going to be like, yo, like you, let's say you're 45 an hour, right? You're going to give this one guy like 35 an hour, 30 an hour for whatever reason. And then he posts on his story, yo, like, 
pull up to JT's thirty dollars an hour, and then it's like they pull up and like you're like oh forty five, and they're like wait fucked. what? Like, fuck that, bro. Yeah. Fuck all that shit. Fuck all that shit, bro. Ah uh, man, I feel like I said so much shit today. Yeah. Bro. I feel like it's a good time to end it though, honestly, bro. It's yeah. Fucking... It's how long it's been. One hour and thirty eight minutes. That's I crazy. I told you it's bad. Be maybe two hours, but yo. I can cut it right at the right yeah. Hour. Because yo. there's so much other shit, but it's like that's too extra. I don't feel like talking. Maybe about episode. It. Maybe another episode. With you will see. You know. Yo, what I mean? another <laughs> episode, and we get someone else in here at the same time if we could. I am trying to figure that out because right now I only got two couches and two mics. That's yeah. kind of what I got the space for. Mm. Oh fuck. Um, but I gotta figure out a way because Dev wanted to come on. Oh shit! Uh, for his album with Kobe though. Oh. Fuck. And it's like fuck. I want both of them there, mm-hmm. and I just have to figure out like I how does the like how, how do I have a third work? person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I originally I was gonna make the set like a table mm-hmm. with like like no jumper type shit. You know, like a yeah, table. Yeah, like the table. You, they're sitting on the other side. You're on one side type shit. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I kind of like this vibe. I feel like it's comfortable. You know. Um, yeah, this is a much better vibe. Than yeah. Like, so I just have to figure out how to have three people though. Yeah, I guess you would have to like maybe move the space to a different where somewhere I don't know. In here maybe I don't know. I don't know. Maybe yeah. in the studio for yeah, that episode. The you know, there's couches be, in there and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like get some uh, different type of lights in there to yeah. like make sure it's like super bright. You can see everybody. At least. Exactly. You know. By the yeah. way, you already got lights though. Yo, it's crazy, yeah, bro. It's so dark in here, but these lights make it look like it's daytime outside. Yeah, you know I, what I mean? Like, I totally forgot. Even peep that. I'm glad I brought these because I feel like if I didn't have them on, it would be too bright to me. No, nah, I like it. Like it's it. There's this oh. thing called the uh, happy lights or some shit. Yeah, or yeah. I don't know. My teacher told me this shit like in like grade ten or something. It's like happy lights. It's for the winter, mm. and it's supposed to like make it so like you don't go outside as much in the winter. You like you don't get enough daylight in the winter. Mm. So you buy this thing. It's called like a happy light or something. And you just put it on in your room, or at that time it was in the classroom, mm. and it makes you more happy, like less depressed or some shit. I feel like this is kind of like the same thing. The same type of vibe. It's like eh? it's bright. It makes you feel like it's the daytime. Mm. Um, it is the daytime right now, but outside it's probably pretty dark right now. It's what like four it? o'clock. It's four? Oh yeah, it's already getting dark. Yeah, shit. it's dark as hell. Okay. Damn, um, this daylight saving shit is not it, bro. I have to walk. Not out. it. I have to walk out in the dark. Okay. BG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking about when the fuck I was gonna. How long was this gonna last? Cause like. I have a session at 7, but I didn't think it was going to last until 7. So I was thinking it was going to last about until like 5 o'clock-ish. So. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking that long. But uh, shit, bro, it's going to be a bitch to transfer to my computer, though. Oh, yeah, bro. I, I told you <laughs> I was going to talk a lot, bro. It's, bro, this shit, my, uh, this camera right here, that's one file over there. That's a couple different files. And then over here, that's a one big-ass bounce on Pro Tools, bro. Now we're 40 minutes. Have you ever fucking bounced something that big? Yes, actually. What? Yeah, when I was a music technique fan. Oh, maybe. Like yeah. post-prod? Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. long does it take? Bro, that's a bitch, bro. I hate doing post-production. I hate doing um, edits for films. I don't like that. I haven't gone there yet, so. Don't, don't. You're, you want, I mean, at least you get I, the experience. I can't not do it, you know, but yeah. You, you get the experience, but personally for me, I would say I'm not a fan. But if I get into that industry, they throw me, if they throw like 50K my way to do a Spider-Man movie, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. Whatever. Because I'm just, because all of these are going to hire more engineers. I'm just like one doing something specific. Yeah. You know? But other than that, I'm not, I would never go out of my way to go after that, to be honest. Not me bad. neither. I'm not that type of guy either. Because there's a lot no. of sound design shit going yeah. on. It's like, pff, I sucked at that shit. Not going to lie. I can't, bro. Maybe that's yeah. why you didn't get your diploma, though. Maybe. No, high key. No, it's probably, it's definitely because like, um, it's probably definitely because my grades weren't good enough while I was in school. Cause like I, I did my I did my assignment, assignments, but they were never graded good. Okay, you know. So I mean, that's what I'm worried about. Session one was easy, bro. I was getting like 90s every test. Oh and no, shit. session two and three are actually where it gets hard. Fuck, For real. I'm For in real. session two right now. I just started. Oh, bro, you're gonna not, not gonna have fun. Who's wait? Who are your teachers? I had Misha. Did you have Misha? I didn't have Mish- no, I didn't Misha. No, Misha. Okay, I had Misha in session one. Uh, Rogerio, he's no. new. I don't think you. He's new. Yeah, Ian Booth. Who? Ian Booth. Ian. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> Ian is a fucking classic. He's literally the guy we were talking about. Talking about yo, just shut the fuck up. Yo, he's nothing. the one who told me this shit. Exactly. Yeah. I bro. know. It's like yo, why the fuck would I do that? Yeah, literally, bro. He's the one who told me that shit. Yeah, no. Um, Ian, yeah, I mean, shout out Ian. That guy was goaded. Shout in out school. Ian. Yeah, that guy was goaded in school. Still, so he's uh, probably one of the funniest people in school. Bro. Um, Sunny Black, the yes, Sunny Black. Uh, yo, bro, funny enough, uh, me and uh, Waterboy and Sunny still work together. Oh I, shit! I, I remember I recommended him to Sonny like after school, and he's still been working with him to this day. That's crazy. So like, yeah, yeah, Sonny's definitely goaded. I love love that man. He's probably taught me a lot. 
uh, even for mastering. He's taught me for mastering some mixing yeah. skills here and there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out Sunny Black. Love that man. There's a lot of the shit you can learn outside of the classroom at Music Technique. You know, if you just take time to talk to the teachers when they're not busy, yeah, you, you can learn a lot more. Exactly. Um, I feel like in the classroom, they just teach you whatever Kaka Shin call it a day. Well, they teach you what's on the fucking agenda. Agenda, exactly. Uh, like, all right, it's the same thing for every student, but if you want to really get into it, you gotta, go talk to them, bro. Yeah, you got to learn something outside of the classroom. Yep. But you know what? It's, hey, man, this was fun, bro. Yeah, I, it was I had a lot fun of fun well. talking shit. Yes, sir. Talking <laughs> shit. Uh, putting, on, p- putting people on game, on the let, let, you know, teaching you all some things here and there. Yeah. Maybe next time we c- come here, maybe I'll fucking make a beat live. Yo, that'd be sick as yo, fuck. Because, yo, this this channel isn't only going to be podcasts. It's what it's, it's going to be mostly podcasts for now. Yeah, yeah. But it's also going to be different shit. It's it's not called the base podcast. It's just called the base. Mm-hmm. So um, there's going to be a lot of different shit going on. You know what I mean? You could pull up. You know, we could have like a little behind the scenes of like a session or whatever. Oh, two yeah. engineers going at it, you know? Oh, bro. I've never seen two yeah. engineers. In the How, or have an artist come and uh, like we're engineering or some shit. And it's like you do it. And then I do it. Like, oh. you mix a song, I mix a song. Who did it better? Oh, the artist. Shit, competition. Cool. Bro, like, that'd be cool as fuck. I never even thought about that. Bro. Oh, it'd have to be like a blind test. Like, the artist can't be in the room. Like, you just send two different versions. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Be two different versions. Like, here's my version, here's this version. Who you fucking with more? We won't even say who is who. Just say which version you fuck with more. Yes. Just bro, say. that's a good idea, yo. Maybe we'll do that shit. Some battle, battle of the engineers? <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly. <laughs> yo, we're about to, we're, oh, bro, we're about to put the fucking engineering community on, on game right now. Yeah. No cap. For real. Uh, all right, man. Yeah, this bro, was a this, good podcast, this is crazy, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you t- uh, making me come out for this, bro. This I is appreciate good you coming, bro. First episode, it was a good episode. Yeah, for I like sure. your vibe. I like your energy. You Thank know you, what bro. I mean? I appreciate you, man. Um, you're young, but you're going hard with it. I fuck with I that. appreciate that. I wish yeah. I had this type of uh, this type of energy when I was younger, man. Cause uh, I was a I was a la- I was a lazy ass bitch. Not gonna lie. If only. If only. If only, but if we'll only. see where it takes us. We'll for see sure. who takes me. We'll see where it takes you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, how do you, how do you usually close? How, you, how are you thinking about closing out your podcast? I don't know. I never thought about it. <laughs> I thought about how to open it. I never thought about closing it. But, uh, yo, anyway, fucking, I guess I'll just say whatever comes to mind, you know? Yep. Um, I don't even know when I'm uploading this either. Like, oh, I don't know my schedule fine. for it, but uh, hopefully in the next couple of days. Um, but, yeah, so uh, thank you for listening to this podcast. Uh, we had JT on. Uh, crazy engineer, crazy producer, crazy artist. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like, uh, comment. If you're listening on YouTube, you got you got to see us. You know, if you're listening on Apple or whatever, you got to to listen to us in the car or whatever. But uh, a you know, it's all different vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, I'll see you guys next episode. Thank you, every uh, thank you everyone for watching, and uh, yeah, peace deuces. out. Deuces, deuces, peace. <laughs>